from Veterans Memorial Stadium at Snohomish High School. It is time for Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County's production of STSPN coverage of the Shorecrest Scots taking on the Snohomish Panthers. Hello, everybody. Casey Bryant here alongside Amp Harrell and Todd Elvig for tonight's production of some good old-fashioned Friday Night Lights. High school football, both teams searching for their first victory of the season. The Snohomish Panthers and Shorecrest Scots both enter tonight's contest 0-2, though both losses have come by virtue of different stories. The Snohomish Panthers have been very, very tight over the course of their two defeats. A 20-13 loss week one at Glacier Peak and a 35-21 defeat at Mount Lake Terrace just last week. Meanwhile, the Shorecrest Scots have struggled to find the end zone. 44-6 loss at Meadowdale in their first game and a 53-6 loss at Monroe in week two. In just a moment, Amp Harrow will be able to track down some coaches and we'll get some pregame coverage here on the STSBN Sports Network. A reminder that STSBN would like to thank all of our sponsors of high school sports, including McDaniel's DeWitt Center in Snohomish, Home Comfort Alliance in Everett, Adrenaline Fundraising in Washington State, Gene Johnson Plumbing in Muckleteo, Bickford Ford in Snohomish, Monster Energy Drink, U.S. Army, Navy, and Marines, and of course, Les Schwab of Snohomish County. The Snohomish Panthers will be led by their quarterback, David Hammer. He is one of the best pure passers in this division. Hammer comes in with a 63% completion rating, three touchdowns under his belt. And Hammer is going to have his lips salivating going up against this short crest defense. I got defense. it. We understand that Amp Harrell has the head coach of the Snohomish Panthers, Joey Hammer, down on the sideline. Amp, back to you. And thank you very much, Joey Hammer. Welcome to these proceedings. Welcome to the Friday Night Lights again, my friend. Let's go. Go Panthers. Got to have faith all night tonight. Searching for win number one. What are we uh, What are we thinking coming into this one against the Scots? Hey, that, they're, they're a physical team, tough team, well-coached team, and we got to control the controllables and that we got to stay within ourselves. That's what it comes down to, us taking care of us, staying focused on us, good things will happen. Absolutely. I've seen this team already this season, and I believe the uh, SDSPN faithful has seen them quite a bit as well. Uh, any changes on the offensive side of the ball to look for? You know, not 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 any changes there. You know, it's, we've got some boys out, but it's next man up. You know how that goes. That's life. And so our kids are res they're resilient and they're just they're they're hungry for it tonight. Uh, what about on the defensive side of the ball with what they're throwing at you offensively? What are we going to do on defense? Woo, we got we got to tackle. We've got a we got a team tackle. We got to make sure we're taking care of everybody. They do a lot of you know action this way and quarterback run this way. Running back goes one direction. So a lot of misdirection. We've got to take care of our job. Our job's the most important. We got to tackle. So it sounds like that's a hide the eggs kind of offense. Yes, it is. It is, and no big play, right? We can't we can't let them have it. So when it's when it's one of those, is this a read the keys type of defense and know your responsibility? One thousand percent. Got to own. You have to own your job. We get eleven dudes taking care of their job. Great things are going to happen all night. Spoken like a true coach. Uh, what about uh, you? Mentioned injuries. Uh, anybody out that uh, we need to know about up front? We have a big. Uh, we have we have a couple boys down. David Ross is down. Uh, we, we got one guy that is going to give it a go tonight. Uh, this is another name, but I won't mention him. Uh, we got Andrew Siemens, is a, our team captain, uh, and he's suiting up tonight, but he's got some hard news to senior. So we're playing for Andrew tonight. That's another thing worth, uh, worth talking about. This is senior night, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's hard, right? It's like, man, it's your last year raw with them, and you love these boys because they're young men. So couldn't be more proud of the senior class. Any, any comments on the special teams going into this one? Hey, we got to be special, right? We got to make things. We got to flip the tide, and uh, we've done a great job on that. We got to keep doing it, and so I look to build on that tonight with our specials. Uh, what, what was that, Todd? Okay, and uh, just final thoughts on this one. We get her done if. Hey, take care of our job and stay stay locked in all game long, and let's see the scoreboard at the end of the night, and it's going to be victorious for the Panthers. We stay locked in, Coach uh, Coach Hammer. Good luck. Yes, thank you. Go Panthers. Got to have faith. Back upstairs to you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. That is the head coach of the Snohomish High School Panthers, Joey Hammer, down with our own Amp Harrell. And you heard the coach mention there that they are going to have to finish their tackles defensively. This is a short crest offensive line that has bled sacks in their first couple of weeks. Ten combined sacks 
over the course of their first two games. This Snohomish defense is going to have to penetrate that offensive line and apply pressure on opposing quarterback Daniel Stevenson because, boy, oh, boy, Snohomish has kept things really, really tight in their first couple of games. A one-possession game against Glacier Peak, one possession until about five minutes left in last week's game against Mount Lake Terrace. This is a team that can hang with virtually anyone in their division, but they have found themselves fruitless on both of their attempts. Now, looking across the way at the other sideline with the short crest Scots, they do have themselves a solid quarterback in Daniel Stevenson. They have generally been pretty stingy with their passing defense, but... Shorecrest struggling to get multiple touchdowns, and especially in the second half. Can I get it? They have been held without a point in the second half in both games that they have played so far this season. This is a team that needs to adjust to the adjustments. Down here on the field, uh, Coach, uh, what do we need to know going into this game for Shorecrest? Uh, we're just going to come out and try and play the best game that we've played all year. So it's with this, we've got a fairly young group of kids. We've got great senior leadership. You know, it's been a tough first couple of weeks going against uh, programs that size-wise have, you know, kind of taken it to us on the field. And, you know, we're growing from those. The kids have a positive attitude uh, out there working hard each day. And we're just going to come out here and let it fly. Any names we need to know going into this one, offense or defense? Uh, you know, we've really been defensively led by Kevin Bowe. Um, he had good offseason, middle linebacker, just plays the game with a lot of intensity, a lot of fire. Uh, you'll see him flying around a lot on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, uh, Danny Stevenson took over for quarterback this year. Um, he's still learning on the fly, making great strides, some good decisions with the football. And so looking for him to take another step and improve this, uh, this game. I want to get a deeper dive, but I know you've got some uh, some boys to coach up. But uh, the Scots get the win if? Uh, we play the best game we've played all year. Fair enough. A man of few words. Uh, back upstairs to you guys. Good luck. Appreciate it. That is head coach Brandon Christensen in his 14th season helming the Shorecrest Scots. And you heard him touch on senior linebacker Kevin Vaux, 5'9", 180 pounds down the middle, someone who combines both strength and speed. And, of course, Daniel Stevenson, their junior quarterback. Learning on the fly is what Coach Christensen said. And for Daniel Stevenson, he's still got another year, of course, to grow under center. And Stevenson, in particular, someone who can be a field general should he be allowed time. And that is going to be the name of the game for the protection unit up front for Shorecrest. For the Snohomish Panthers, they'll be starting out with David Hammer at QB, Silas Green at the H-back with Parker Jackson and Mason Surdy at wide receiver. Their fullback, Zaya Nelson, tight end Lucas Bosa. Their offensive line has Jason Marshall at center, Seth Abood and Nolan Powers to his left, Jonathan Farlow and Joseph Chapman to his right. Meanwhile, for the Shorecrest Scots, offensively, they'll have Danny Stevenson at QB. They're running back Kevin Foe, who plays on both sides of the ball, and boy, is he a terrific athlete. Wide receivers Tyson Lasconia and Charlie Chin. Their tight end is Gus Hamilton. Tight end Ben Chestnut and offensive line Noe Cordova at center. Theo Childs and Carter Nichols to his left. Jacob Engel and Peter Grimm to his right. We're getting set for kickoff. We'll throw it to break for a moment. When we come back, we'll have the Shorecrest Scots and Snohomish Panthers. You are listening to STSBN's coverage of Snohomish County High School football presented by Les Schwab Tire Center. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet, too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And 
You know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Full practice, switch doctor, request immediate contact. Here on a team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood. And it's a, it's a real brotherhood. And it's a loyal and honest brotherhood. And that, that's what matters. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Back inside Veterans Memorial Stadium at Snohomish High School, Casey Bryant alongside Amp Harrell for tonight's coverage of the Shortcrest Scots at the Snohomish High School Panthers. And Amp, you were just speaking with both coaches on opposite sides here, and we were talking off air in particular about the, the lines in particular on both sides of the ball. Shortcrest has allowed a lot of sacks, but protecting David Hammer also of paramount importance to Snohomish High School. What can we expect here in the trenches between these two teams? Well, I expect uh, a pretty hard-fought battle on the Snohomish side because they have got some beef, they've got some experience. We weren't sure going into the first game, when we did Armstrong Cup, what we were going to see, and this was a Snohomish squad that really just came out and was ready to ball. They had they had some big dudes, they had some championship wrestlers, literally, on that, uh, on that line. No, not WWE, but... Uh, Still, if this football thing doesn't work out, then uh, they might have an opportunity there. Uh, but they kept a clean pocket for David Hammer and let the young quarterback step into his own. You mentioned the sacks on the other side for the Scots. I'm curious to see, because Coach did spotlight some, some beefy dudes on the line. There are some injuries on the Snohomish side. So if they can get that turned around. I tell people I was raised by offensive line coaches. So... I, I think about the big bruisers and the battles on the line of scrimmage, and it's boring for the average fan, but that's where games are won and lost. The most important position in football is often regarded as the left tackle, the blind side, and Nolan Powers is there for the Snohomish Panthers. Nolan Powers in this season, only a sophomore, but 6'3", 225 pounds. That is a absolute unit on that offensive line. Well, 6'3", it gives him the, the height, gives him the vision, gives him the size. Uh, but being under 300, that's that gives him some flexibility. He can move uh, and pass blocking the the twinkle toes. It's really important. Back in the day, they used to have NFL offensive linemen do ballet. And it was because you got to be big, you got to be flexible, you got to be light on your feet, and that's a good combination for this squad. Footwork is always of paramount importance, and I tell you what, agility is the name of the game of football. And there's some other offensive weapons that Snohomish has when it comes to agility. I think about their receiving threats. Parker Jackson is terrific deep ball threat. Mason Surdy is a terrific threat. There's some good weapons there for David Hammer to work with offensively. Well, and and you left off my uh, my my favorite dude on this on this offense. He's one of those H-back types. You can line him up in the backfield as a fullback. He's a tight end, and he's an extra lineman, and that's Bosa. Bosa is a stud and a half, and he's a good safety blanket for quarterback Hammer. Uh, and again, you got to have him block. So 
You're going to see Bosa a lot. There were there were a number of passes caught by Parker Jackson. I believe he's a two-way player as well, so you'll see him being disruptive in the other team's passing games. He is. He is on the strong safety position there for Snohomish Panthers. And when you look at the Shortcrest Scots then, we cover the Snohomish Panthers quite a bit, but Shortcrest, this is going to be the first time looking at them for the STSPN crowd. And this is a team that has struggled mightily out of the gate. They have allowed a lot of points while themselves only scoring six points in the second quarter in both games, their second halves have been something of, of a, a point of focus for them, trying to improve. You heard Brandon Christensen say, we need to play the best game of the year so far. What does that mean for a team like Shortcrest? Well, first of all, it means not making mistakes. We can talk about the battle in the trenches all we want. We can talk about young quarterbacks stepping in and stepping up, receivers, whatnot. None of that matters. It's a false start. If you line up offsides, if you break the huddle with too many men, I don't know if they huddle anymore, but uh, okay, substitution infractions. Don't make the silly penalties and don't put yourselves behind the chains. Then it's just about executing and getting better one play at a time, one drive at a time, and then you just need to finish and, and get a stop. So I'm not saying that Shortcrest is going to win or isn't going to win, but to play the best game of the season just means getting better. And a lot of that is going to come down to the play of Kevin Vo. He's something. He's someone that Brandon Christensen certainly focused in on in your interview with him. He, play, he starts at the running back position, but he's also right down the middle as a middle linebacker to get that kind of versatility in a leader, especially as a senior, though he is a little undersized at 5'9", 180. He's someone that Brandon Christensen labeled as intense. I would say intense is a good, good way to term it as We've got our coin toss here. The Panthers, wow, they won the toss and elected to receive. So Coach Hammer so wants to get the tone early. But Bo, down south, SEC football, that kind of thing. The high schools down there where I come from, they do a lot of the running back linebacker thing, and I'm expecting some pop out of Kevin Bo, and we'll see what he can do in that linebacker spot staring down Hammer on the first offensive series. Yeah. It will be Hammer and the Snohomish Panthers getting the first possession of this football game, an opportunity to truly set the tone on senior night for Snohomish County. Time now for the playing of the National Anthem here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. The color guard is commanded by Cadet First Sergeant Sophia Manuel, Cadet Sergeant Tristan Weeks, Cadet Gunnery Sergeant Logan Smith, Cadet Corporal Molly Shackelford. To the Republic, in which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At Veterans Memorial Stadium here for STSBN's coverage of the Shortcrest Scots taking on the Snohomish Panthers. Casey Bryant here alongside Amp Harrell. The Snohomish Panthers will receive the ball first on their senior night. We saw them pay homage to their 14 players of seniors and six cheerleaders as well who are seniors. Taking in their final season of 
Snohomish Panthers football, and it's always a beautiful thing whenever you see the ceremonies that go into the senior, the sharing of the memories, and there's going to be a lot of emotion on the red and white sideline tonight. Yeah, and it's it's even even more unique this year. Only three home games for the Snohomish Panthers squad, so you don't often see the third game of the season to be senior night. And it's a shame because, really, they, this is such a nice venue for high school football. To only play here for three games seems like a travesty. I'm saying he's playing. This this ball that no one can finish football. So you can't have this police will be game. But but the memories are in the last or the third game of the season. You see, you have a lot to play for. Something that I, I just kind of picked up on as we were pausing to honor America there, two very different football teams, not just actually sit out and hit and go, but about the approaches. This is a drill trust team. It's going to be a new They're going to try and take care of business, but they're also going to try and minimize mistakes. And while this is a Snohomish squad with a whole lot more dudes out there, that seems to mirror the energy of Joey Hammer. It's going to play fast and loose. And if Shortcrest is playing not to lose, that's going to go right to the Panthers' thing. Now, I tell you what, the Shortcrest, Scott, you mentioned that they're going to be playing very tight. I believe a lot of that you'll be able to tell by the way that they attack the quarterback defensively right off the jump. Their defensive line is not the biggest in the world. But are they going to take that extra step and fight through those blocks? Are they going to try to penetrate to David Hammer quickly? Are they going to stop the run up the middle? You're going to be able to tell a lot by this first sequence, judging by how they defend the football. Yeah, and with their size, with their their strengths, I would not be shocked to see them play a lot of zone, a lot of read and react, and not be overly aggressive because speed kills. Absolutely right. But if you make the wrong move, if you step the wrong way, there's nobody behind you to help. This homish squad can run. It will be Gus Hamilton lining up to kick things off as Snohomish gets ready to send out their special teams unit to receive. The Shortcrest Scots will be wearing white jerseys with white helmets. Meanwhile, the Snohomish Panthers in the scarlet and white with their jerseys and pants and white helmets. Back to receive deep for Snohomish is Ryan Stepp, one of the 14 seniors. And Stepp relied on as a receiving weapon as well so he will be starting a long night of work as he is back as well as parker jackson who is on the near side of your screen snomish attacking from right to left and away we go for friday night action it will be jackson receiving at his own five darts up the right side he's got an opening sheds a tackle he's at midfield he's working his way to the 40 gets another block he's going all the way an explosive start for Snohomish. See, on this particular series, how they attack the quarterback. That's a way for special teams to be special. As Joey Hammer said in the previous interview, touchdown. Parker Jackson, the junior for the Snohomish Panthers, had been averaging 22 yards per return. He gets a couple of blocks. How about that block that he received right at midfield? A low block takes the man out and opens up all the space he needs to take off down the sideline. I also have to say the, the sideline is the extra defender, and he will hear that that dude as well. Terrific footwork there by Parker Jackson. Picks up his second total touchdown of the season on to kick the extra point for Snohomish is Ethan Huber low snap it's fumbled it gets loose behind Huber he's tackled play is still left alive and now it'll be thrown up into the air by a hammer but it will fall gracelessly down into the end zone I really thought he should have been down on that and six boys still it's out there good effort by hammer to just chuck that one up he had a receiver Gary, you just put too much under it. You know, it's not often that you see two plays into a football game, all the madcap action that the sport has to offer, but right, that right there is chaos personified in its first couple of plays. Well, we need to step aside for a break here. And while we've got a moment, we'll throw it to commercial. You are listening to Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County's coverage of the Shortcrest Scots at Snohomish Panthers. Don't go anywhere. I hear the 
take part. We're here to take over. I am the beast. Back inside Veterans Memorial Stadium, a kickoff return on the opening drive. Parker Jackson with the touchdown. A flubbed extra point. But nevertheless, Snohomish leading it 6-0 over the short crest. Scots lining up to kick it away is Ethan Huber. Back to receive deep is Charlie Chin for the short crest. Scots. I'm excited to see what the short press offense looks like. Well, you got to get through the uh, the special team play first. Huber kicks it away. It's a short kick. It'll be fielded on a bounce at the 15. Racing forward into a mass of humanity down at the 35-yard line. Brought down up high. And the Scots will go to work, helmed by Danny Stevenson under center. I think William Hernandez on the stop there. And a vicious tackle, and now it'll be a chance for Stevenson to sort of calm the waters. Whenever you allow an opening play touchdown, you can sense a little bit of panic on the sideline. This is Stevenson's opportunity to really settle things down. And he's he's got a gadget offense. He's, he's going to spread things around and disguise what he's doing. And if you're not responsible for your man, if you get caught looking in the backfield, bad things can happen to the home. So let's just see. Coming out in the shotgun split receivers, a back to his right. Fields it, hands it off, running up the middle, getting a block, and picking up about 15 on the play. A nice run there by Kevin Bowe. Pleasure Ulrich on the tackle, and uh, really got tackled by the ball carrier. Bowe lowering that shoulder, that's the intensity that we talked about. He drives head first into the defender. What I'm curious about is the Christensen, the head coach, uh, he kind of showed his hand because he put a ginch back in that whole left side, and that was exactly where the run went. If I can see it up here, they can see it down there. I don't expect uh, another play to go that way for 15 yards. Evenson will have Bo by his side once more. Receivers at each sideline. Foreman down in the pass rush, crowding the line are the Panthers. Low snap taken and run forward by Stevenson. He'll approach the first down marker just about a yard short. That's a boot on the stop. That was Stevenson improvising. And it's kind of the don't shoot, don't shoot, good shot. Because <laughs> that was not how that play was supposed to go. And he went, oh, shoot, he took off and just about got a first down. Good tackle by a booze to uh, save the sticks. And he gains an extra two yards there at the end by not sliding. He elects to take that extra step and go over a defender rather than stop short in front of him. Ponia to the near side, probably chin to the far side. Second and one for the Scots. They're inside Panther territory, a handoff, and they'll get the first down, Vo again. Yeah, but there was that same kind of play. They motioned that, that H back, that Gitch back from that left side into the B gap and, and rub right that Three way. Stop for about a yard game, but then we need a run. Like Isn't that for the third and first here. There's going to have to be because hey, on, on the defensive side of the ball, once you get those first couple of sequences in order, then you start galaxy brain. You know, that's when you really start to go to work as a coach. That's when the film studies come out to play. And the film study. New set of down and an option play to left, and Stevenson will be brought down hard in the backfield. For, for loss, I don't know that it counts as a sack as he was looking forward, but a boot saw where things were going. They went off. It'll be a loss of three for the Scots. And a jailbreak in deep and a nice tackle there by Abu, the junior, who has now four tackles for a loss on the season. Like this front set, the front seven essentially for the Panthers. And this is a veteran group. They know what they're doing. They got a nose of the football and they are anxious to get wing number one. Look at Dean Ward there in the defensive tackle position. 305 pounds lined up on the far side of your screen. Taking the snap as Stevenson rolls to his right, throws it into the turf. And it'll be third and long. There might have been a little trip on that one by uh, Renzo Del Corso. Believe so. One of the 14 seniors on the field there for the Snohomish Panthers. I haven't seen number 53 take the field much this season, but uh, the season is still young. 
And it's an opportunity really to get everyone involved as well with so many seniors, and they're all chomping at the bit. You heard Joey Hammer mention in the pregame that Andrew Siemens was banged up as one of the seniors and a captain for the squad. He said that this game was played for him. Yeah, and, and Siemens has been a leader during his four years. Taking the snap, pressure on, throws it in the turf. Stevenson brought down, great pressure once more there by Abu. Abu with a little extra something, something there at the end, right in front of the official. I'm surprised we didn't see a flag, but he finished the play. And Stevenson brought down to the turf, and it will be the punt unit on for the Scots. Stevenson was twisting every which way. It looked like he was supposed to roll out and immediately saw red in front of him. Yeah, these... These Panthers, they can dial up a blitz, especially against that slightly undersized, slightly inexperienced front. Let's see if they pressure the punter on this play as well. So then Lyris, the punter for the Scots. He fields, boots it away deep towards the 10-yard line. It'll be taken by Jackson, who cuts to his left. Jackson with bodies in front of him. Wrestled down with the wrap-up around the neck, down in the back of 23-yard line, and it would be the first opportunity of the game for David Hammer. Now watch this tackle, though. Garrett uh, Garrett Chamberlain will wrap him up. So a play. Up on the helmet. Nothing personal, dude. Just making a play here. It's a beautiful game, isn't it? Violence, but poetry. Violence, poetry, respect. <laughs> it will be Hammer in the backfield for the Snohomish Panthers under center. He'll have by his side Zaya Nelson. And the first opportunity for the Panthers, and they already have themselves a lead as Hammer takes the handoff. Rolling out to his left, but not much there for Nelson as he's brought down right at the bar. Something I like with my offensive headset on here, because well, and now they're going to go tempo. They fake the jet sweep. You've got to respect Parker Jackson, and then we dive underneath it uh, and got what they can get, which was uh, about first. Bosa is in the slot position right there as sort of that H-back flex offensive player as Hammer is going to look for him over on the right side. Took a bump in the back, but it is broken up on the play. Charlie Chin keeping his eyes towards the football. He's got a little bit of a track, but like this, but I love that little sluggo. Just trying to drop it right in the bucket. And just as the ball was approaching Bosa, he gets his shoulders in the back and it was just enough to interrupt the train of thought for Bosa. And Lucas Bosa, the senior, 6'3", 215, an athletic specimen for the Panthers and one of their most relied on offensive units. Third and nine for the Panthers. Taking the snap from their own 24. Hammer is going to throw. Goes short to his right, taking a few steps forward. Not enough for the first. And yeah, that was just taking a switch. Drop off out of the backfield to Nelson. You make it a, a slightly better field position situation for this punt. Fourth down and medium. Peter Green was a tackle. Of course, the first shot. They don't have to exactly do anything crazy. And so it will be Gabe Cortez on the punt and away for the Panthers. As back to receive will be Chin for the Scots. And a three and out for the Panthers in their first offensive possession. Seven and a half remains here in the first quarter. Panthers leading at 6 nothing. Man in motion. As a high snap taken by Cortez. And with his left foot gets it out to about midfield. It will bounce towards the 40. Out of bounds. They'll mark it right about the 40. Cortez. Get out of spot there. as right with the 41. Yeah, I Okay, they'll walk it back up and make it the uh, 43. That's where I thought it was. Going. There you go. A little trigonometry kind of thing going on here. <laughs> uh, while we have a moment, I, I forgot to mention the, the officials for today. Back judge is Trey Law. Uh, head linesman is Rick Hecht. Uh, Ross No is the line judge. The umpire is Mark Stoltz and Joel Taylor, the referee on this crew. Danny Stevenson back to work, was able to drive inside Panther territory his first time out, but no points to show for it. As the Scots, with a raucous crowd working against them, they'll have two receivers out to the left. Stevenson hands it off, and that right at the line and forced back is foe. Terrific work there by the defensive line. And look who's right in the middle of it. It's a boot. Goodness. That was, that was an unfortunate play because Bo goes straight up in there and 
it was almost like a cartoon. He's like, uh, I don't want this. Let's try again. And uh, yeah, gets slammed down WrestleMania style by a boot. I do not want to be on the receiving end of that German souffle. <laughs> And there's just no one there blocking a boot on that far side. He races right in with nary an impediment. Well, but there's also some more beef on that line that you got to take care of. Pick your poison. Second and 11 here for the Scots. A quick screen out to the left side. Trying to shake his way three and diving forward for about a gain of two is Tyson Lasconia. Lasconia, he, he had to make his own block there. Because the screen was inside. They were flowing outside, and there was nobody there, so he had to try to make the first man miss and fell forward for a pass. Reeve LaRue on the tackle there, and a nice job for the Panthers as he wrapped him up down low. Third down and all at nine. Stevenson taking his time as he walks up to the left hash mark. A boot out on this play, so let's see what to put him as boys dial up here. Stevenson throwing all the way, rolls out to his right, on the run, looking for a man deep in and out of the hands of Westonia. Coverage there, and an extra lick on that side of it. It was a out, they didn't dial up the blitz, they went straight back into coverage and defended it perfectly, and here comes the punches. And just a little bit of wobble on that throw, tough heading over towards the sideline, and it's the junior Lasconia that just has it hit off his hands. Sunset near as gorgeous veteran Memorial Stadium. Lights are on, and I don't expect any glare to be well, playing a part in any of this here. And we still got a little bit of warmth here on what is going to be soon a crisp autumn in in the greater Seattle area. A high oh. snap, and oh boy, this will go all the way towards the 15, oh, but it, whistles will blow. They just blow it dead. Let's pre-snap, go. Penalty. Oh, pre-snap penalty. Pre-snap penalty, and that bails out the Scots. I, I was afraid there was a rule that I had not heard of. Oh, and it's against the helmet. It's an encroachment. Or I guess you could just say procedure. But that is a definite help to the Scots because uh, I thought that was like the rules we're getting in all levels of football <laughs> to try and make the uh, special teams plays a little more special and a little less frightening. I'd say it's, it's almost we're getting to the point that the kickoff is going to be phased out entirely. Yeah, I remember, I'm old enough to remember the uh, craziness of the XFL with uh, <laughs> we're going to put the ball at midfield and you're going to run for it. And uh, that ended a dude's career. And uh, they're going to run it and it's going to be blocked. It's picked up by Smahomis running inside the red zone. And picking it up is Ty Tautolo. Corin Liris tried to do the rugby style kick. Uh, and he saved the points. That's all you can say. He tried to improvise, see what was there, and he sort of knifed that one out that was blocked. And if he didn't make that play, better be for six. Tao Tolo, a beast of a freshman, 6'3", 200 pounds, has been applying pressure to opposing quarterbacks in the first couple of weeks for Snohomish, comes up with the block. And I tell you, if you're Lyris there, you've got to get that kick away sooner with the way that the offensive line's been blocking. But, oh, boy, look out. Hammer fielding another low snap as that's the second time that the Panthers have had difficulty snapping the ball. That's center Jason Marshall having a little, little bit of difficulty with the play. That was snapped wide. It almost looked like it was supposed to be a direct snap to the running back, but he was in the wrong spot. I was expecting the kill shot on that first down play, but you got to get into the quarterback's kicks first. Hammer takes the snap. He'll look for the pass to his left side. He's got Jackson. He's wrapped up and he gains some of those yards back. Talk about seven. Uh, puts it in second and medium. But uh, I like the safe throw. You just throw that underneath the curl and again. It'll be third and 13. They'll want to get just a little bit closer, if nothing else, to make things easier for a potential field goal. Mid distance away from the center is Hammer. He fields, looks to his right. He's got Bosa in open field. He'll be marked down short of the first down marker. And we'll see if they'll keep Hammer out there. No more losing to that. Well, there was a, a tackle made by Poe. We got to see what he looks right like. Linebacker versus tight end violence right there. And Hammer will remain out. They'll go for it on fourth and nine. Especially this early in the season at this level of football. The, uh, the field goal units are not as uh, as well tested for these situations, I would say. And why not keep the ball in Hammer's hands as he's going to go for the end zone? He's got Jackson wrapped up off his shoulder, incomplete. That'll be a turnover on downs. 
flag. Good battle, both fighting for the football right. But uh, I don't mind the no call there. Tyson Lasconia on the coverage, and you saw him put his arms straight up in the air. Jackson perplexed as to why no pass interference, but good coverage there by Lasconia. I do like the offensive play call there. You pick on Lasconia. Uh, he, he's not a liability, but uh, he also hasn't shown that he's a, a first ballot Hall of Fame watch. Well, he's smaller. He's 5'11", 135. So immediately, just in terms of the mathematics, you like a 6'1", 175 receiver and his odds of out-muscling a cornerback. Nevertheless, the third chance here for Daniel Stevenson. He's got a long way to march. He'll roll right to his right. A good pushing forward, and now the Panthers say that they've got the ball as it came free out of Stevenson's hands at the end of the play. And we've got a wrestling match down on the turf. Let's let's see the replay here. I did not see that because I was looking to, to check numbers on tackles. But he just gets into the hole, and an excellent job to just try and rip that out. I think he did rip that out. Ty Tautolo again. Another strong defensive play there by the freshman. And that was that was a good, smart, heads-up play because you want to get the stop, but you got your boys there. you got plenty of help. So as you're reaching around to wrap him up, just get in there and jar that football out. The heads-up play by Tautolo as I think they're trying to decide who has the ball and what the situation is. And it will remain Shorecrest football as Stevenson is able to hang on to it for long enough. And it was that they didn't they didn't have the benefit of the replay cameras and they didn't call it on the field. Well, it's, there's 18 different angles that you could pick from on NBC and SD, SBN though, terrific job with all of their replays and camera equipment, unparalleled at this level of sport, thanks to our executive producer Todd Eldick and assistant producer Sarah Eldick. We'll uh, see if they can uh, call down to Camus for the uh, replay with you. Rolling out to his left and a nice job picking up some ground. Kevin Vo on the handoff. He'll approach the first down marker. Just the first quarter of action. I love what I see from Kevin Vo. He can lay the wood uh, on the defensive side of the ball, and he is going to run to contact. Third and short here for Shorecrest as they try to force the issue. They have kept things within one score. And they have been very methodical on offense. You're noticing a difference in pace right away, but from the way that Shortcrest handles themselves in Snohomish. Now, what do we have here? Is there a stoppage of play? Is there a timeout? The officials just scooted Shortcrest back, and now Snohomish is going to jog off the field with a clock stop. I'm not quite sure what happened there. It's indeed, as they're taking everyone off the field. No, no weather patterns in the area to worry about. An official's timeout has been called. And so they are going to go over something. Uh, they're they're uh, getting the chains out because of uh, the spot of the ball after that run. I didn't think it was quite that close, but I think they're just trying to make sure the chain gang and everyone else is on the same page and the ball is spotted in the right place. I uh, did want to point out that there is a shortage of officials at all levels of youth sports. So it's really easy for us uh, goofballs with the headsets on and for uh, moms and dads and aunts and uncles to rant rave about the, uh, oh, it's a first down. They measured for a first down. Well, better safe than sorry. They do their due diligence and come up with the correct sequence. And so a new set of down for Stevenson. But either way, if you're if you're interested in keeping youth sports alive and have the the willingness to learn and the willingness to sacrifice, you need you. We need plenty <laughs> of officials, absolutely. And I'm sure you can contact your uh, local coach and find out who to contact with the official associations. A lot of thankless positions, especially at this level of sport. Absolutely, partner. Stevenson in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, one in motion. Feigns the handoff, keeps it himself. The option gains about a yard. Ow, it gains a yard. You're seeing Stevenson's mobility on display right away. They run a lot of plays in which he's constantly trying to carry the ball forward. Well, I've seen a lot of offenses like this. You mentioned the tempo. You mentioned the pacing. 
if you know that you're going to be in a battle, but you've got young guys that maybe you're a little bit outmanned or outgunned, you want to keep that clock moving, have the ball as much as possible, and misdirect. That's what they're doing here. Stevenson, Uh-oh. play action, fumbles the handoff, diving on top of the football and barely keeping it on his side. I'm not even oh, sure that was a sure play action. Football. I think his feet got tangled up on the on the pullout or maybe trying to get around his running back. Couldn't keep his pins. That sets up third and 15 now for Shorecrest. A lot of plays, a lot of time chewed up on this drive, but not a whole lot of ground has been covered. But the good thing for Shorecrest is that they're eating up a whole quarter here, and they're only down 6 nothing. One touchdown and an extra point, and they're on top. Very much within reach as Stevenson with an empty backfield rolls to his right, now scrambles out to his left. Oh He's pressured oh and put down in the backfield. And Tautolo picks up the sack. Tautolo with some help from Logan Willis. And he kept that thing alive as long as he could. But when he tried to cut back against the grain, help was there in red. And that is a tough situation for the Highlanders here as they're going to have to punt. And they will have to do it very late in the first quarter. And Tautolo will bring him down. He will likely get credit for the entirety of the sack, though. Willis himself has been one of the best pressurers. Kind of flushed it back into his arms. Four seconds. Have to snap it. Now, and they will let the quarter expire. And so that'll do it for the first quarter. 6 nothing in favor of the Panthers, save for the opening kickoffs. No scoring on either side offensively. Surprise there, but uh, we'll call that a win for both defenses. And so we'll take a brief timeout. 6 nothing is your score. When we come back, we'll have live coverage of the second quarter. You are listening to Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County's presentation of STSPN High School Football. Don't go anywhere. 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. Casey Bryant and Peril back inside Veterans Memorial Stadium at Snohomish High School as the Panthers lead 6-0 over the Shortcrest Scots, and they're about to get the ball back as the Scots are going to punt it away after being stymied a long, long, long sequence because all in all, they probably lost seven total yards from where they started. Yeah, it was a, a whole lot of back and forth, a couple of sacks and TFLs, and both sides have had trouble with that quarterback center exchange even out of the shotgun. So this is going to be really, really, really important for Shortcrest. We've seen some snaps go bonkers in this one. If one goes over his head, it's two points. So they're going to take care of this football and punt it away clean. It'll be Soren Liris, whose last punt attempt was blocked, a high snap. He'll jut out to his right and get it away. It's short. It'll land at about his own 43-yard line, and it will be picked up without a return and so david hammer has excellent field position heading into this drive i think this is going to be another feature back type of drive grind it out smash mouth football but i've been wrong before because they go to those underneath checkdowns they can go to the fades to the corner they have got the whole playbook open in front of the young hammer the panthers so far have tried to spread the wealth as best as possible they've targeted jackson they've targeted bosa nelson they've tried to get as many different moving pieces involved as possible set it downs hammer in the shotgun he'll hand it right off to nelson who takes a step forward tripped up in the backfield gains about one uh, the offensive line for both sides kind of struggles nobody has just 
dominated either side of the line of scrimmage. And while in the backfield there was Chamberlain, didn't look like he made too much contact with Nelson, might have just lost his footing. Second down and 10 for Hammer as he takes the snap, hands it off to his left. Nelson again lowers the shoulder and picks up five. Open field tackle. I think that was for, uh, Gus Hamilton who just laid the wood in open space. And Hamilton tries the other route and there it was head-on collision. Beep, beep. Not want to be on the uh, business <laughs> end of that one. That's all the analysis you get this time. One by four set, or one by three set, excuse me. And they draw the Scots offside, and that ought to pick up the appropriate five yards necessary for a new set of downs. I don't know. I think this might be a third and short situation. Third and two. Offsides, short grass. Offsides, and we'll see where they mark it. Still third down. They will, in fact, still be third down as they are short by a yard, maybe less. And so Hammer's job just got a lot easier. A couple of subs checking in as into the game goes Colva Dard. Colva Dard and Silas Green both making their way out onto the field. Oh, they're going to go with that bunch formation. This is a goal line set. Just trying to get that short bit to get the first down. An immediate handoff. Good blocking. Flag is down as Nelson races forward. Flag in the backfield. I have green with a good block out in front, but this one may come back. Three straight handoffs to Zion Nelson, the big body junior for the Panthers. As we await the official delineation, and it is, in fact, a false start on the part of the Panthers, so the five yards they gained are given right back to the Scots. Joel Taylor with the bad news there. But on this third down play, maybe they go to the air this time after the consecutive run plays. I was not surprised to see something out in space to Lucas Bosa, 6'3", 223, and a... Uh, Diet Sprite remix. Bosa, Green, and Surdy all lined up on the near side. All three of them viable receiving options for Hammer. Hammer takes the snap. It will, in fact, be a pass. Takes a step forward. Evades a tackle. Short check down in front. He'll get the first down and a little bit more. It's Mason Surdy. 30 with the third. He's aware of the sticks, but... Hang a gold star on that play for David Kramer. He's aware of the clock. More importantly, he's aware of the line of scrimmage for that little jump pass. That is a veteran play by a veteran quarterback there for David Hammer. Still only a junior. And he's back to work with a new set of downs. He'll hand this off to Nelson. He runs to his left into traffic. He's wrapped up and met after about a game of two yards. Leading the charge on that by Looks like... Max Beer and Garrett Chamberlain. Couldn't really get that going in the D-gap, trying to get it out and bounce it outside. Good pursuit by the next level there for the Scots. And you're starting to see the Panthers try to wear down the interior of the defense by using Nelson as a wrecking ball through the middle as they'll feign a handoff kept by Hammer. Scrambling out to his left, he's brought down, ball is free, and it's picked up by Shortcrest. It's Kevin Vaux falling on the football. Hammer wrapped up as he ran to his left, got caught in the arms. Trying to do a little bit too much as he was just trying to keep the play alive, as you can see here. Fake the handoff, pressure in his face, bubble, bubble, bubble. And as he was trying to decide, am I going to pitch it? Am I going to eat it? And it just popped right out. And it is Ben Chestnut with the tackle that ultimately forces the fumble. Hammer at the last moment tried to flick his wrist forward so as to have it constituted as a forward pass, but no such luck. That's tremendous pressure. Tremendous pressure, but to your point, a really heads-up play by a junior who got some playing time last year on the squad as a sophomore in relief, but uh, still turnover to the Scots. Let's see what they can do. From his own 
25, looking to his left, completing the pass, breaking forward, gaining nine, and a nice completion to Gus Hamilton from Denton Stevenson. I love that play for the Scotch. That is easily their best look all night long, he says at 9.01 in quarter number two. <laughs> it has been a long first quarter, even if it moves quickly. Well, it's been a lot of offensive time for short sure. sure. You think about how much of this game clock has been controlled by Stevenson and company. And that look there with Hamilton lining up behind that last guard, I mean, that's a terrific play. Yeah, and, and he just kind of slipped out there. I'm a big fan of the tight end. Grew up watching Frank Wycheck, the pride of Maryland, doing some good things in the NFL. Uh, and, of course, we've got a good crop of tight ends with the Seattle Seahawks as well. Oh, that's true. It's very true. First down for the Scots. And it does go for a first down following Theo Childs and Tommy. And so Stevenson back to work. In the shotgun with the back by his side. Takes the handoff, hands it off to Vo. Vo breaks forward. Ooh. And he'll pick up another big first down. A nice gain of 12 there for Vo. LaRue with the initial lick. Here's Here's right 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 down, but it's slowing down. They are running to the brink. As you see on that replay, they've got a tight end and an H back on that left side. And he just rams right in behind. Good, solid work by Ben Chestnut. Uh, and I believe that's Gus Hamilton as well, just road grading in there. And they're doing the dirty work necessary to open up lanes for your running back. It's what you always need. That's the buy-in you need from your receivers and tight ends. And that's going to cause a suck in, and he could open things up in space on the outside. There Stevenson it is. Sin with another screen on the right side. He completes it, but it'll be wrapped up for a tackle for a loss. Excellent work popping up out of it. Yeah, it's uh, Richard Holrich again with a tackle. Reads those screens, and that's knowing your responsibility. Bridger Ulrich, you that play up. Bridger Ulrich, the leading tackler for the Snohomish Panthers. That is his 13th solo tackle of the year. I tell Tolo in the area as well. Dudes with a nose for the football are always going to be on camera. Oh, it's, it's a nace. You can always tell very quickly which defenders are going to be in the thick of it. It's that football IQ. It's intangible, but you can always tell pretty quickly. See it on film, that's for sure. Second and 13 for the Scots. He's lining up on the line again is Hamilton. Picked up and running forward on the left side. Brought down by Tautola, but another good game for the Scots. Did that ball come loose again? I don't, I don't know, but at the end of it, Tyson Lasconia wound up with it and was trying to lean forward, and the referee is like, no, no, this is over. <laughs> as it was, Tautola bringing it down, and as he dove oh, forward, oh. a little bit of contact with Ryan Stepp. The, the ball kind of wiggled, but I think the round would have caused the fumble, which is not how the rule is written. That's where you would need the super slow-mo to make sure that it doesn't quite come out before that knee's down. Out over the football. The nose is Maljusini. Third and six for the Scots. As Stevenson looking for the quick pass, he completes it. Hamilton surrounded by bodies, but he'll get the much-needed first. And this is now a successful drive that you're seeing out of Daniel Stevenson spreading the wealth. And how about Gus Hamilton coming up with a couple big plays for the squad? He's just finding a soft spot behind the linebackers in front of the secondary. He takes a pop for his uh, for his patience there, but uh, this is how you get those chunk plays. You figure out where the soft spot in the defense is and exploit the ever-loving heck out of him. Well, he ranks as one of the largest men on the offensive side of the ball for short crest, so he's someone that can take that punishment. It's it's on the left-hand side behind those blocks of uh, Carter Nichols and company. Low snap for Stevenson, still able to get the handoff off, and look at that, and a more open space up the middle, and another good game for the Scots. Now, this is causing belief. What? Now, the, the ball came free. Yeah. At what point? I, I didn't see the official. Oh, they're calling timeout here. The official timeout. As we take another look, taking that step forward is Vo. And Vo was wrapped up by three different Panthers, and that ball comes free. It never even touches the ground before it's ripped out of his hands by Cohen Bennett. Yeah, it got stripped out, and the only concern I would have is either a second whistle. They're going to they're gonna say it stays with Shortcrest, but was there a whistle to blow his progress dead? I believe so, as it will remain Shortcrest ball, as they will say that forward progress was halted for long enough. Steven gets the snap off and another good run up the middle. This one is Jake Lockwood, the senior. 
taking it up the middle and this unbelievable just right up this first. And right through, oh, right through the tackle and upended Bridger Ulrich. Grab cloth and hang on. Another good first down as a long possession for Stevenson inches ever closer to that end zone. Well, Shortcrest is starting to believe everything the first three weeks of the season, all the offense or excuse me, all the practices in the offseason, it's all starting to gel. They're starting to believe that they can play well. And Snohomish had better get a stop here. They have been pounding the middle, and it has been working for Stevenson, who picks it up. Options to his right. He'll keep it himself, charging forward. And a good gain here for the field general of the Scots. I mean, I'm not one to second-guess Brendan Christensen, but I don't know how much I want my uh, undersized quarterback improvising into space against those big bodies wearing red, but uh, still, he gets a big chunk of uh, cards and sets it up in second and medium. Well, he's been playing with a fearless and reckless abandon, as has Stevenson, and why not? It's paid off. At this point, I think you have to lean on that hero ball for Shortcrest because six points in their first game, a loss at Meadowdale, six points in their second game, a loss at Monroe. The team that is hungry for points, go to their big guns. Second and six, Stevenson will hand it off up the gut. Bo picks up more positive yardage. To your point about getting the points, I'm looking at the standings in West Coast 3A South. Monroe, Terrace, and Fullwood are all 28. Uh, Snohomish, and Shorecrest all 0-1. And, and Edmonds Woodway yet to play in league. This is an essential game for Bo Stevenson's position. From the 20, Stevenson takes it, hands it off, trying to gain some short yardage, pushing forward. Will they have enough on it to get the first? Looks like he'll get it. Got to give credit to that defensive line for not giving an extra blade of grass, but to gain a couple yards, it's hard to stop a guy that's basically the up. And this has been a methodical dissection of Snohomish's defense as they have been constantly picking up these four yards, it's five yard gains, six back. It's death by a thousand cuts here. Jude Lewis in on that line. He's a little undersized. 6'3", 200 pounds, playing as a defensive lineman. He's, he's now a 300 pounder. But he's in there for depth because those big dudes are getting worn down. New set of downs with 3.15 remaining on the clock here in the first half. Stevenson drops back to throw, looks to his right, at the fingertips of his intended receiver to his right. And that's the first play without positive yards for some time. Yeah, and I think he was hearing some footsteps. He was trying to feather that one. He got a little bit under that one. Bury that in the belly of your receiver in the flats. Otherwise, uh, that, yeah, that could have been a, a good, solid completion. But there's a breather for this Snohomish defense. It's back on its heels. And Stevenson... Breaks the huddle. It'll be three down on the line for Snohomish. Unique formation. Two receiver at short side right, and the back goes that way too. You have that field. Another man hops in motion. Hamilton, and he'll get the block. Leading forward is Vo, as he's now inside the 10. This is just old school football. It, I don't know if that's quite basic power, but... Uh, that's just, I'm going to scrub the hole and hand the running back up in it and get a chunk of yardage again. And I tell you, that is terrific blocking on the near side of your screen there by Carter Nichols, who's the junior, serving as the left guard there for Shorecrest, powering his way forward. I think that might have actually been a blast play, and everything is stacking and swimming and even the motion going right, and they just went back the other way and got the yardage they needed for the short. Three yards needed for a first, a bouncing snap. Stevenson picks it up, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. Outstanding reaction, Logan Willis to just see blood in the water and attack like a shark, and that's going to be a stop. And now fourth down and six at the 14. What do you do? I know nothing about the special teams for Shortcraft. I think they're going for this one. Their kicker is Gus Hamilton, but he will remain on the sidelines. Hamilton was practicing field goals in the in the – pregame festivities from about this distance. Actually, out there is a tight end. 
He's on the right side. He's lined up just behind Butter. He has been active in this entire sequence. A timeout will be called. Oh, no, it's not a timeout, actually. I, I stand corrected. It's a we false start. Here, and that is a disastrous turn of events here for Shorecrest. Fourth down and call it 13. It looked like the right side kind of moved or leaned. It might have even been the kicker slash tight end. They have had the ball for the majority of the second quarter. 149 remaining, fourth and 13. And they're a play away from having 10 minutes elapsed with nothing to show for it. The only points in this first half, a kickoff to return for a touchdown. If you were late to your seat, you missed all the action. Right now, take it by the stops. They will want to talk things over, and while they take a timeout, we'll take one ourselves. You are listening to Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County's presentation of STSPN High School Football. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Fourth and 13 at Veterans Memorial Stadium as the Shorecrest Scots have been driving for virtually the entirety of the second quarter. They're a long way from the first down marker. They'll need to get to the seven. Stevenson has two receivers to his right. Bo right behind him. It'll be Stevenson dropping back. He's got a man open on the right sideline, but a bit out of his reach as he was looking for Lasconia. Both Lasconia and Hamilton were trying to gesticulate. That a signal that they were open. You know, I got to give them credit, especially as the quarterback just takes a shot. He got crumpled, and it's a turnover on downs here. But I thought, just like you, that know, ball is way overthrown, and then all of a sudden, Lasconia is right in view and very nearly caught that for a touchdown. They know a whole lot more about their offense than we do, partner. Lasconia, like, he turned on the Jets at the last second there. He used that burst of speed. It's almost like he didn't read it right off the jump, whether it was supposed to be for him or a fade route to Hamilton in that far corner of the end zone. Stevenson put the right amount of air under it, just a little bit offline, and Snohomish would breathe a sigh of relief on first ground. So the two-minute drill at work here for David Hammer, who completes it short to his left. Finds Silas Green. Uh, that, that's weird. He looked for a second there like they were saying it wasn't complete, and now it is. <laughs> I didn't trust my own eyes for a second. Green will a good job to scoop it off the turf as it will be third and six. And it will be a short completion running up the middle, and a nice job there yes. by is Nelson. North-south running. You notice nothing fancy, nothing they crazy. He just popped that ball, turned his shoulder pads towards the goal line. The way he went for the first down, and the clock pauses for <laughs> first down. Guess not. And he picks up the first clock, keeps moving. Hammer will throw it once more to his left, a bit high, and off the hands of Silas. Backing up and kind of favors the left the screen, here. Scene, but uh, that, one, that one had him sprawling. Silas Green hobbling a bit on that left leg, favoring it a bit. And that at least gives Hammer a chance to breathe and reset. From his own 34, look out, another errant snap and racing back for it is Hammer. And that is the third time this game that the Snohomish Panthers have over-snapped their target. Uh, and again, veteran wisdom in this minute drill one minute drill he knows just eat it don't do anything crazy don't cost yourself field position we've got timeouts but it, did short press take that one or did it's not short press it is short press timeout 
And that gives us a little bit more room. And we'll throw it to break once more. 45 seconds left in the first half. 6-0 Panthers. You're listening to Les Schwab Tires of Snohomish County's coverage of STSBN High School Football. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Third and ten for the Panthers as Hammer takes the snap. He's going to hurl it deep. It's a bit short and broken up by the outstretched arm of Charlie Chin, and that forces fourth and ten. The Panthers will likely punt it away. Chin was right there in the pattern, and uh, he was the closest man to the football initially as out in his throne. A little miscommunication, but a smart, heavy sequence by head coach Brandon Christensen to burn that time out and well, not allow Snohomish to just get out of this first half playing to their 6 nothing lead. They're going to have to punt this football on fourth down at a country mile. It is fourth and 27. Cortez is lined up in his own end zone to field this one and try to punt it away. And Scott, should they receive cleanly, will have to work a lot quicker than they have been over the course of this first half. And as it is now fielded and booted away by Cortez, it's short, fielded on one hop, and cutting to his left foot down a nice tackle. A great job there by Reeve LaRue, marking the receiver chin. I don't love the fact that he was so far from the, the return man, but he didn't grab cloth, he grabbed a shoe. And that run back goes nowhere. And LaRue with another nice tackle. We've seen the sophomore LaRue come up big in a couple of spots where he's wrapped men up and just used that upper body strength. A deceptively strong player. Absolutely. And speaking of deceptively strong players, the, the uh, tight ends have been key for the Scots in this sequence. So they've got just one timeout left, 31 seconds left to go from the 39. I expect the linebackers to engage for Snohomish on this defense and not allow that little pop pass that they've been making money off of. They have 40 yards to go to reach Pater. Stevenson takes it. He's got three options to his right. Elects to go over to Lasconia, who's been a popular target. Keeps on his feet and gets out of bounds. That was smart. They moved the pocket. They kept that spinning. Uh, and it wasn't the pop pass. It's a, a short developing play. But in about seven seconds, they get a first down. And a great job by Lasconi to stay on his feet and get to sideline there. Yeah, that's that's as good as a timeout. Actually, they do not get the first down. They say he went out after a nine-yard gain. I thought he had about 12. I thought he got that extra step past the marker. In any event, the clock does stop, so that leaves 24 ticks for Stevenson and company. He's going to the far side, tight boundary, right side. He's joined by Chin on that far side. Shading over there as well is Vo. Crowd making noise is now a man in motion, Lasconia. Stevenson drops back, hurls it over to the right side. He's got a receiver locked up in and out. That is an incredibly smart play. Three defenders on the one man. My thought when I saw the bunch over there is, are they going to be wild enough to run some kind of a crossing pattern and throw to the left side of the rest of the field? No. Everyone in the stadium knew they were thrown to the right side of the sideline, and the three defenders there... It's who's going to make a play. It is ultimately the one-on-one play there, and it is Taylor Ariola coming up with the stop on the coverage there of Chin down deep. So now being pushed back, I believe, with a delay of game penalty. Second down and 11, 18 seconds left. Holding the Scots. Oh, it's holding on the Scots, actually. Oh, holding. So... Tough row here. 
But when so they're, they're essentially back to where they start. Still a long way to go. You have maybe two chances at a Hail Mary if you're Stevenson. Well, my concern here is that they, they have to go to the sideline if they, they want to extend this. And Snohomish is content to go in two-thirds of the field. One timeout remaining. Low snap scooped off the ground by Stevenson. Looking to his left and batted down with authority by Ty Tautolo. That, that is hot by this defensive staff. Force Nahomish. They know they haven't looked to the left at all, and it just took way too much time. The pass is bad down. And Tautolo again breaking past the offensive line. That forces third and 11 with 13 seconds left. I'm enough for one, maybe two more looks down towards the end zone. Third down and 11. Tough spot for the Scots, but they will get the football coming out of the locker room, so trying to make the most out of it. And they'll hand it off, and it looks like they'll be content at the very least to kill the clock, unless Nahomish wants to take time out and force the issue, which it looks like they will. Oh, ho, ho, ho. fourth down. This is a bit of showmanship by Coach Hammer, and I love it. Because, I well, mean, that's exactly what Scott did in the last series. And why not? You've already that's blocked the punt, too. We'll come back and cover the final play of the second half, or excuse me, of the second quarter when we come back. You're listening to Les Schwab Tire Center of Snohomish County's coverage of STSPN football. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Mere seconds remain in the second quarter as the Panthers lead at 6 0, and they're going to look to get the ball back as the offense out for one last play for Shortcrest. They're not looking to punt, though. It'll be instead be Daniel Stevenson taking one final look towards the end zone. He heaves it up the left side, intended for Chin, and it's batted out of the air. And that will do it for the second quarter. I'm a little surprised he didn't try and kill a little bit more time there. But, yeah, we'll go to the locker room yes. in a 6 nothing to the homies first half. Yes. And a, a very evenly matched first half. We saw a lot of offensive time taken by Shorecrest there. And, and we mentioned back in the first quarter the pace differential right now. Hammer has been mostly run and gun, no huddles, keep things moving. On the other side of the ball, you've got Shorecrest that has been trying to whittle down this defense. And it, it's it's just a matter of trusting your guys. Coach Hammer knows that if his personnel can get out there, improvise, do all kinds of different things, you're trusting this offense and frankly trusting the defense on the back end. For Shortcrest, they want to win the shortest game possible. If I only need to win two plays to win this whole game, I'm going to do it if I'm the Scots. And so far, both strategies working out pretty well. It's a one-score game. Panthers on top on Cinder night. An opening kickoff touchdown returned by Parker Jackson has been the only scoring. Before we toss it to the halftime break, STSPN would like to thank all of our sponsors of high school sports. McDaniels Do It Center in Snohomish, Home Comfort Alliance in Everett, Adrenaline Fundraising of Washington State, Gene Johnson Plumbing in Muckleteo, Bickford Ford of Snohomish, Monster Energy Drink, the U.S. Army, Navy, and Marines, and, of course, Les Schwab of Snohomish County. Stay with us when we well, when we come back. We'll have the second half of STSPN's coverage of high school football. Come with us, the new generation, the next level. Sending it big. In for a good run. Let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this. To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back hard. <laughs> to the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood. To the sweat. And 
the broken bones. Ah. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. <laughs> to the world titles. His first Grand Prix. To the world's first. Fuck yeah. The world's best. UFC strawweight champion. Ready? Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Searching for meaning in a relentless world. Always connected, but somehow alone. Trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. 
awakened by a calling. United by purpose. Defined by the cause you fight for. It is not about truth. Work together to get over the obstacle. No one can ever take away you are in this ring. what it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation. Celeste flop tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab. generation the next level 
sending it big. Oh, oh my goodness. You're in for a good run. Let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this. To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back hard. <laughs> To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. First to the world's first. Mafia. The world's best. UFC Strawweight Champion. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And... You know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Full practice, switch doctor, request immediate hunt, extra day on Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust, the one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.com. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation.
Memorial Stadium at Snohomish High School. Casey Bryant alongside Amp Harrell for live coverage of STSPN presentation of some high school football. The Shortcrest Scots trailing the Snohomish Panthers 6 nothing, And Amp, we saw in the first half a tale of two different offenses. And I think on paper heading into this game, a lot of people would have expected Snohomish to be coming out flying on all cylinders. I, we saw the first play as explosive as it was, but they've been kind of held at bay thanks to this short crest defense. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he didn't say a word, but I, I think we could telepathically broadcast from the but that uh, first play of the game, that first play was a kick six. It was just like, okay, I know how this is going to go. You know, <laughs> next home, uh, honey, keep the dinner bun. Yeah. But uh, all of a sudden, we're we're still six to nothing at the half because both sides have just played good old fashioned gridiron. The defense for short press has been vulnerable at times, but they've done just enough. And, and the uh, the offense for Snohomish. Do you get the sense at all that Snohomish has been pressing in the first half? There's a lot of emotions. It is senior night. Do you get the sense that things just aren't clicking because they're, they're tense, they're tight, they're forcing it? I would say after the first series. Because initially, this is a this is a Joe Mara led squad that they know they're going to be in every game. They know they're going to have an opportunity. This is a conference game. They need this one. They're already up six to nothing. They don't have to do too much. They got the stop. They got the ball back. The squid figure. But then after that, oh, this is the short press team that wants to play. And a nice return that gets up to about the 47-yard line. And so good field position right off the rip for Daniel Stevenson, who spent most of the second quarter driving, but Shorecrest faltered at the doorstep of the end zone there in the second quarter. And that's got to be frustrating for Brandon Christensen's squad as we it looks like we have ourselves an injury delay. And it's Vo. It is Kevin Vo, the heart and soul of this team as Snohomish gets a knee. Uh, but to your point, it is frustrating to be that close and not be able to, to cash in and, and get points out of it. But at the same time, this is a team that has to play its best game of the season. And they're still very much in this thing. And to shorten the game, keep it a one-score game, they only need one touchdown in order to walk out of here victorious as Vo will run this one off. Kevin Vo will be on the sideline to start as he gets... Tended to by the training staff. And so that eliminates one of the better weapons for Shorecrest. As Vo will be on the sideline, Jake Lockwood is listed as their backup running back. I would expect this one to go to the air, though. Let's go out. Lockwood will line up beside Stevenson in the shotgun. Over to his left, Hamilton. And so they will hand it to Lockwood, who powers his way up the left side, gains two yards. Yeah, decent safe play. I was wrong, but uh, they, they show that they have faith in their running. Now, Lockwood is a veteran presence for this squad. He is a senior on that roster, so you do know that there is a bit of experience there, some savvy there, and most importantly, some calmness there. You don't want some panic. That, uh-oh, we lost our big gun. You want still things to stay placid. Yeah, and, and they're, they're confident, they're comfortable, they're running their offense, and, and that's safe for the Scots. Second and seven, they'll hand it off again. Lockwood bounces off a couple of defenders and smashes his way forward for a gain of another two. And they'll be within about four or five yards. I, I like that play there. That was kind of a like a counter almost as it starts starts left and then cuts back behind a rip block from Jacob Engel. And it looked like it was going to go for very little. And this brings up third down at about four. Good power shown there by Jake Lockwood. And so it'll be third down for the Scots. Stevenson has yet to throw on this particular drive. He'll line up right on that right hash mark. Hamilton feigns motion. It'll be Stevenson rolling left. It's a man in an open flap, but off the hands of Hamilton. And it'll be fourth and four. Got a little too excited there. He had exactly what his coach told him he was going to have. And sometimes the hardest play to make is the uh, one that's the most wide open. It's punt time. You've got both men in motion there, and just a little twisted around was Gus Hamilton, the senior. And it will, in fact, be the punting unit on for the Shorecrest Scots, Soren Liris. 
It's been an adventure this uh, first half so far. Let's see if they've tightened up the special teams and see what kind of field position the Panthers get. Ty Tautolo with a block in the first half. This one is a clean punt, a low punt at that. That goes right into the sidelines. And so it won't be terribly effective. It will boot the Panthers back about 15 yards, if that. But the good thing that you can build on is not a bad snap. Very good snap, actually. Got the kick away clean, no pressure. And, and so it's just a field position. I tell you, if the field position is going to be impacted that little at that point, with only four yards to gain, you might as well take the shot there. You're not sacrificing too, too much. Fair enough. I mean, we've seen Great that. Great hindsight is 2020. <laughs> we've seen that in, in all levels of football, though. They're getting away from the punting. David Hammer back to work for the Panthers. They lead by six. An opening kickoff touchdown and a punt, or excuse me, a point after attempt that was muffed. A run up the middle that gains two yards for the Panthers. No huddle offense still at work. Similar kind of situation here. They both come out on first and ten, and they both run right up the middle uh, with their lead back, or the lead back in the formation, I should say, and get about two yards. They're seeing whose sea legs are still under them heading out of the halftime as there is a quick screen that finds the hands of Jackson, who cuts his way forward, powering his way to the 42-yard line. Gus Hampton on this, or Hamilton rather, on the stop. That was one of the more effective screens we've seen from either team as that one was blocked up well and you use Parker Jackson's speed. And a nice tackle there by Hamilton. Oh, I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find a snap that he's missed so far. He's on the special teams unit, offense, defense. He's one of the most powerful players for Shorecrest. Love seeing guys that can get it done in every facet of the game. Now they'll look to the sidelines with a call in the pistol set, two by one. It is third and short, and handed right up the middle, and just about gaining that first down is Zaya Nelson. I did like the look there, because you'll see on the right side of your screen, able to kind of leak out a little bit, get the block is Bosa, but uh, still, that that's going to come back later on a play fake. It's Peter Grimm with the tackle there, the senior for the Scots. And so David Hammer will reset Still on his own half of the field. Takes the snap, hands it to his left. Nelson driving forward, gets a block open. Space brought down from behind in enemy territory down at the 38. This is the difference in these two teams. This is a Snohomish Panther squad with confidence and with swagger, and they can take you out. They have no fear. Meanwhile, the Scots team is learning how to win, and they just want to keep the clock moving, keep the game close, and try to finish it out. A good cut and a good block by Jackson, and that sets up good field position for the Panthers as they run it up the middle once more. Nelson with a gain of two. On the dive, working in the area of Peter Grimm. Got a piece of that tackle as well, but just pound, pound, pound. But but David Hammer does have quite a gun on him, and he's pulling out into the sidelines, so just watch the playbook. We have seen the versatility of options here for this Panthers team. They hand it off again. Nelson into the pile, bounces off, cuts to his right, gains the first down and a little bit more. Nice second effort there from Nelson. Nice second effort, nice third effort. We were talking about the footwork of the offensive line earlier. He kept his legs under him and gained an extra three. You see he runs right into his offensive lineman there and Nolan Powers. Good job again by Gus Hamilton to just hang on. First down and 10 from the 21, clock moving. Hammer takes a quick throw for Jackson, who bursts forward. He gets a block, sheds a tackler inside the 15, brought down at the 10. That is deadly. If you can get the just enough of a block on the screen, combined with the speed of Parker Jackson, it is deadly, and they will go back to that one again. Guarantee it. Now, the way that they're driving right now, you would think that it was Shorecrest that had their defense out for most of the second quarter because right now it has been all energy from this Panthers squad as they hand it off again. Good wrap-up in the backfield and a nice tackle and a much-needed stop for a loss. Yeah, good penetration uh, among the guys leading the charge, Kevin Vo. Good to see him back out there. It's his first snap out there, and he is a bit shaken up, and we have another player hunched forward. A Snohomish player a little slow to get up. That being number 52, Seth Abood. 
Abood was a big, big playmaker in the first half, and then he kind of got quiet. He was taken out for a breather, and, well, Shorecrest was able to equalize. And Abood is not normally called on on both sides of the balls. There's a quick throw over the right side and well over the head of his intended target, and so that will bring up third and 12 for the Panthers. Yeah, Abood playing that uh, left tackle, or excuse me, left guard spot on this sequence. As Thalmish kind of changing things up, clock stopped on the ball out of bounds. It was still live because it was a screen to the outside. That lateral pass will get you every time. 7-18 <laughs> in the third. Third and long here for the Panthers. Hammer throwing all the way, looks quickly to his right, completes it. Parker Jackson. Inside the 10. Oh, uh, was that Parker Green. Jackson? No, that was number eight, actually. That was Silas Green, my bad. And a nice reception by Green. Second straight play that Green is targeted. Fourth down. It sets up fourth and short. Fourth down and five. A long five, it appears, from the sticks on the far side. they got to go to the air, I think. And it is Hammer remaining out there. He's going to look to his left. Bullet pass over the middle, broken up. Turnover on downs, and Shortcrest holds the lines. Looking for Bosa, the tight end, playing out wide. And you go to the sure, hand, sure hands and the big body, but uh, just finger tipped away, bend but not break for the Highlanders here. And Bosa has been relatively quiet this evening. I think we were expecting him, especially with the athletic mismatch there. He's one of the biggest bodies in this division at his position, but he's been mostly held in check. Yeah, 6'3", 223. He's mainly been a blocker tonight. But now, with that attempt, first and 10 for the short crest. Highlanders, or Scots, they go by both. <laughs> and it'll be from their own nine, a long way for them to go. And it will be a handoff to try to get themselves some breathing room from the end zone. It will gain two yards. Rugby scrum there, and we've seen a lot of that tonight. But I've so seen this at play. all levels. Yeah, I've seen this awesome. at all parts of the country, that if you're a little out man, you're a little out gun, you grind it. You keep it close, you bend but don't break, and it's there for you at the end. And the 6.20 left in the third quarter, the table is still set for the Scots. I tell you, the 10-yard line has been where offenses have gone to die in this game because both teams have had drives stall within the red zone. Allergic to the end zone. As it is Stevenson taking the snap, handing it off, gaining another short modicum of ground are the Scots. That was Steve Ward. 305 pounds. He had a, a blocker on his left side, and he still Over bends back to his right and just makes the wrap up. Beautiful play. And I tell you, Vo gets an introduction with a 6'2", 305-pounder landing right on top of him. Welcome back to the game. Yeah, just a big old bear hug. <laughs> hey, just playing football out there, coach. <laughs> My goodness. Third and five here for the Scots. Needing to get a first so as not to sacrifice good field position. A short pass over the left side, complete and good yards after the catch as they will get themselves outside the 30. That's a first down for the Scots. I thought the Panthers had his own defense dialed up there, but picking it apart. Shorecrest with the first down and then some. And good blocking downfield as well by the big fellow Theo Childs, 6'1", 260. And it is Hamilton on the reception. Hamilton has been a force to be reckoned with on both sides of the football. I tell you, Gus Hamilton has been able to combine both his size with his hands. He's making a lot of plays with his hands that are close to the line of scrimmage, but it's just very short-handed. You always know that option's there. you got to go to your safety valves, your safety blankets, especially around the line of scrimmage. Get the dump off, get the sure thing. And there's Hamilton moving before the snap. It sets up the option. Stevenson charging forward. He gains eight yards and approaches the first down marker. He might even have it. We're a little bit uh, early to be talking Black Friday, but uh, he moves yeah, through those crowded scary. aisles like uh, like he's <laughs> fighting for the hot toy this holiday season. Uh, I will follow his block. <laughs> you got to get to the dirty areas. You want the good toy. Wisdom. Very good wisdom there. Second down and one as we move on. It is Stevenson. 
Distant from his center, a back by his side. He hands it off to Vo, who bounces to his left. Vo gains five, and it's another first down for Shorecrest, who have picked up their fair share of firsts yeah. over the course of this football game. And, and you mentioned the center position. I believe that's still Jacob Engel snapping the football. No issues with the center to quarterback exchange. And the block up the left side by Noe Cardova uh, to really free them. So there's under four and a half to play here in the third quarter. Yet another methodical drive here for Shorecrest. It started within their own 10-yard line, and they are just now approaching midfield. Shannon Lasconia to the boundary near side. That's the right side as you view it. Hamilton sets up behind the line. They'll hand it off again to Vo. a short gain for the Scots. Decked and dropped by Jude Lewis in their defensive line. He saw the strain and went that way and found the football. And it's another just short game for the Scots, just picking, picking, picking. It's like they're going at a scab right now going against this Panthers defense. Trying to get it to come loose. But uh, very stubborn defense. Very stubborn battle in the trenches up there with a, that's a five-man front. Well, I tell you, the rush is the way that most teams have found success against Snohomish. They have not allowed much in terms of passing yards in any of their contests this season. As it is Stevenson dropping back, looking to his right, looking for a man over the middle. Well incomplete as there was double coverage there. But ultimately, looking at the yards allowed for the Panthers, 83 pass yards allowed in week one, 58 allowed in week two. They haven't been allowing much of anything through the air. Yeah, the, the Air Force not served here at Veterans, Veterans Memorial Stadium, I should say, or even on the road last week. Uh, but the passing is a difficult road here because three defenders again around the receiver, the intended target. It's like Snohomish knows what's coming. Heading into tonight, quarterbacks were just 9 for 22 against this Panthers defense through the air. And Stevenson has been trying to find a rhythm with the passing game. He'll look for it again, going over the middle, and this time he connects. And a good catch made on the right side by Ben Chestnut. Picks up the first for the Scots. Ben Chestnut and Gus Hamilton have been the best weapons for downfield attacks for this Scots squad. Two defenders and then a third one trailing, and he still threads that one in. A thing of beauty for Shortcrest, moving the sticks, and... That's going to be a big splash against those yards you were just talking about. And I tell you, that's a great job of floating that over the outstretched arm of Cole Bedard. He's there in between the quarterback and receiver, and he's still trying to block his field of vision. A great job of dropping that in. New set of downs for Stevenson. Under three minutes to work with here in the third flag thrown before the play. Ball start. I I think that was one of those wings that moved. This is the first look we've seen at this offensive set because normally they've got a a tight end in tight, receivers out wide, and then a ginch back that kind of goes in motion. Instead, they went with double wings, so you couldn't see which way it was going to go. Height the strength, but uh, who moves first? The answer is someone wearing white. (laughs) And backing themselves up, they've taken a couple of these false start penalties. Self-inflicted wounds. We were talking about any keys to the game. You have to make the fewest mistakes if you want to have a chance to win. It's still 6 to nothing. still anybody's game here in the third row. I tell you, most of their penalties, though, have come when they have been on their offensive half of the field as Stevenson drops back to throw, a short throw, short throw over to Lasconia, breaks through one tackle, two, dives forward, and is able to pick up six yards on the play. So basically gets back to the line of scrimmage the prior line of scrimmage, and I like the confidence to put the ball in the receiver's hands now. And a nice job by Lasconia, though Lasconia a bit slow to get back up to his feet. Officials time out as they're uh, taking a look at Lasconia right in front of Coach Hammer. And he is going to be escorted off the field. He'll have to sit out at least a play. He's favoring that leg a bit gingerly as he makes his way to the sideline. So moments after... Low, or excuse me, Vo was ushered back. Now it's their other big gun, Lasconia's turn. Fresh receiver into the game, Anthony Downing, 5'7", 145, a junior. He wears number 12 on your screen. Second down and 10. 
to 15 to go as time ticks away. Yet another clock-eating drive here for Stevenson. Four men lined up on the defensive line. Fielded by Stevenson, handed to Vo. Vo spins off a defender, gets himself to the 35-yard line, and that sets up third and four. Bridger Ulrich on the tackle in open space. I like that one. They they went towards the power side, but he kicked out, went around the block, and went wide and found a few extra yards. Going to bring up third down and about five, we'll say. A manageable conversion here as we're about a minute and a half left in the third quarter. Now, if you're a betting man, you're either going to Vaux or you're going to Hamilton. They have been the go-to third down targets here for this Shorecrest squad all throughout the evening. Hamilton kind of in a king set to the left side, double tight ends that way. And they will, in fact, hand it off to Vo. He's got space. He gets the first as he lowers his shoulder and gets inside the 30. Tackled by Parker Jackson. That's one of your secondary guys. That's a second-level play, and that plays into the hands of Shorecrest as they are controlling that line of scrimmage and moving those bodies downfield. I tell you, look at the left side of that offensive line, the way that they pushed themselves forward. That's an excellent job as a unit. Yeah, and, and sometimes if it's pass blocking, you're just trying to occupy space. You're just trying to push them back a little bit. If you're trying to run the ball, first thing is to occupy your guy. Second thing is to move him out of the way. They did both of those things on that play, first and yeah. Hamilton moving now over to the left side of the offensive line. Another handoff. This one goes into the hands of Jake Lockwood. Gain of about a yard and a half, we'll say. And he spells Vo, if only for a play. 38 seconds left here in the third quarter, and it's still a one-score game, and it's still Shorecrest ball. Just sit on that football. Take the air out of it. I tell you, now, if you go back and evaluate the second quarter and now the third quarter, how many minutes have Snohomish spent on offense? Is it two? Is it three? Like It's been mostly Shorecrest over what is now a, a half worth of football 10 seconds remaining in the corner looking over to his right and a low throw scooped off the ground and that will in fact be a completion to charlie chin nice efforts one second left and now they'll let that second lead off so third down and short as we have hit zeros in the third and a nice job fighting his way through a defender there as on the coverage was taylor Ariola. Nice job by Chin to get a first down for his squad. We're heading into the fourth quarter. 6-0 Snohomish, but the Scots are threatening. Stay with us when we come back. We'll have more Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County's presentation of STSPN High School Football. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet, too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Back inside Veterans Memorial Stadium at Snohomish High School where the Panthers lead at 6-0, but Daniel Stevenson has orchestrated yet another long drive for the Scots as they are inside enemy territory. And just a pass completion there to make this third and manageable, but this is absolutely four-down territory, fourth quarter down by six. Casey Bryant, Amp Harrell here for live coverage brought to you by STSPN. Out of the huddle, Stevenson has Vo to his right. And he's got four receiving options out there as well. Taking the snap, looking to his right. Over the shoulder of the defender, but way out of reach of Charlie Chin. 
Yeah, that was one of those things where I wish I'd had a moment to, to just kind of take it in. They were on the right hash. Everything really has been to the right if it's been through the air, and it, it took away most of the field. It took away 75% of the playing surface, and he had to force it into a small space an extra defender, this time for Snohomish. And they have been attacking Taylor Areola all night when they have gone to the air. He is that right corner for Snohomish. On the other side of the field, you have Parker Jackson, one of the fastest men, not only on that team, but really in this entire conference, as evidenced by the opening play of this contest, a kickoff return for a touchdown. The only scoring on the day. And now fourth down and three from the 23 not necessarily make it or break it time for Shorecrest, but they need points. And we have a little bit of a halter here as the clock had to be reset. Now that we have some conversing going on with the officiating crew, we are ready to rock and roll. And Stevenson stares down the barrel of another fourth down. I would go flood here if I'm Shorecrest, but I don't know if they've got like a three receiver crossing pattern kind of thing pressure coming stevenson to his left he finds hamilton who gets around a defender reaches forward oh. and picks up the first that depends on the spot he got right to the 20 yes. the Three sticks are behind the 20 and he was tackled kind of behind it as well so i think they're going to give him the first but it was very close i believe he fought his way just far enough past that 20 Little well, happy dance there on our on our screen from Carter Nichols, one of the linemen there, dancing a jig for the Highlanders. And why not? I mean, that is another good job of buying time for Stevenson to work and move back there. And he finds Hamilton once again, those short completions. Whenever they need just that little bit of gain, those three, four yard plays, Hamilton has been there. And yeah, they didn't need all of it. They just got the check down and it was money. Four receivers again out for the Scots. This time a quick screen pass to his right. He's got a man breaking a tackle and snaking his way up the right side is Lasconia. He stays on his feet and is finally forced out at the seven-yard line. Back in the action, Tyson Lasconia. That was an interesting play because it was a it was a screen going right, and Ty Tau Tolo just blew it up. Uh, as he knocked down the tight end, but good improvisation and keeping that play alive and continuing to keep it alive. First and 10 again, Scotts. And you see the shake and bake there on the replay as Taylor Areola went down early to try to make that tackle, completely lost his footing, and that is the kind of nifty footwork that we've come to see from Lasconia, not only tonight, but all season long. First and... Goal for the Scots as they race their way up the left side, barreling towards the end line. Are they in? No, they signal. will be just short. That was a heck of a play. Normally, I would say go north south, young man, but he bubbled out and bubbled out and kept it going and down at the one foot line. Very, very close is that handoff there to Kevin Vowie. He got around the outstretched arms of Tautolo. In the shotgun again, Stevenson, options to his left, gets it to Vaux, and that's a touchdown for the Scots. Shorecrest has tied it. And now the special teams will come into play, and it seems like that's every single game. Special forces teams, an extra point, and this is a Shorecrest lead, my friend. Snohomish's point after attempt was blown up by an errant snap. For Shorecrest... Gus Hamilton is on. The holder is Jake Lockwood. Do you try for the block if you're the Panthers? I say you play it clean. It is Ben Chestnut, the long snapper. Snaps good. Holds good. Kick is up. And the Scots have put themselves in front. Bend but don't break all night long and Shorecrest with the lead with 10 minutes left. And for the first time since the opening play, the Shorecrest Scots have themselves an advantage and Snohomish will get the ball back when we come back. 10-16 remaining in the fourth. Don't go anywhere. It's a barn burner. 
You're watching STSBN's coverage of high school football presented by Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. Seven to six now your score as the Shorecrest Scots come up with a big touchdown run. A handoff to Kevin Vo and an extra point attempt is good. And so Gus Hamilton has put the Shorecrest Scots up 7-6. 10-16 remaining in regulation time. And it will be up to David Hammer and this Snohomish offense to get things working as a bouncing kickoff is fielded by Jackson who now maneuvers to his right. Jackson's been dangerous, and he's got another lane. Jackson is forward. A flag is down as he's brought down at his own 35. But I think this one's going to come back a little ways. I think that was a hold out around the 36, trying to give him a little extra room. It's difficult when it's fielded on a hop and when he's got to go the long way around. He had the speed, but, uh, yeah, this one, a little extra grabbing of cloth. Now, we've seen all game certainly a torrid pace out of the Snohomish offense and Joey Hammer's team. Now, not only do you have to have a quick pace, you have to have a certain sense of urgency because now time is ticking away. Time is your enemy, and you are trailing for the first time all game. Now, I would normally say that in just a neutral game that you don't have to necessarily worry about all of that, but... This is a short crest squad that can chew up an entire quarter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in normal situations, you just need another stop. You get the ball back. Everything's going to be fine. If you give the ball back to short crest here, you might not see it again. Exactly. They've had two or three different eight, nine, ten-minute drives. And a lot of that has certainly taken its toll on this Snohomish defense. So yeah. Yeah, you don't want to give the ball back too quickly either. Right. This Panthers team has got to be able to, at the very least, provide their defenders a little bit of time to breathe. Those that are not also used on the offensive side of the ball. High snap for Hammer, and he hands it off to his left. And running right into the pile is Zaya Nelson. Yeah, not a whole lot there. Among those speeding to the football, Garrett Chamberlain, they, they put eight in the box and said, run at us. And, well, Snohomish did. <laughs> and not much of a game to show for it. Call it about a yard, at least according to the dial it down over there. Hammer fields it at his shoulders. He's going to look deep. He's got a man down the sideline just out of reach of Mason Surdy. Surdy tried to get separation. Decent presence by Jake Lockwood, but uh, still, that was just a, a little too far out in front. Otherwise, he might still be running. And it's just that one-on-one. -on -one. He said, see you later with the speed and just a hair overthrown by Hammer. 9.32 to go here in the fourth. It'll be another third and long. In the slot, once again, it's uh, my my hero, Lucas Bosa. Let's see what he can do right there in the dead center of your screen. And he'll look right over the middle. He'll target Bosa. He goes up oh. with one hand, but unable to connect. And sure enough, you called it. They looked for him, couldn't connect. Yeah, that was a little drag route over the middle. And I'm not sure if that was put a little too high. There is a linebacker that it has to go over the top of. But uh, if he catches that, that's an easy first down. And the punt unit comes back on after only 40 seconds of work for the Snohomish Panthers. And ordinarily, like you said, 928, a lot of ball left. But with the way that Shorecrest has been able to finagle their way upfield slowly but surely, it is dangerous territory. But you do have your three timeouts. All you need is to get one more stop, get this ball back. Another uh -oh. high snap. This one's over the shoulder of Cortez. He's down at the one, hit hard, loose in the end zone. That's a safety. Diving for it. That is a safety as it goes out of the back of the end zone. And disaster strikes for the Panthers. 
The Edmund officials are talking about it. Shorecrest was trying to say they scooped it and possessed it in the end zone. But no, this one carries out the back of the end zone. Another snap issue and two points and possession. It is the fourth errant snap of the game for the Snohomish Panthers. And it is an extra two points gift wrapped to the Scots. Nine to six your score with Shorecrest getting the ball. Unbelievable miscue there. We talk about it seemingly every week, whether it's radio or TV. Special teams are key. Is it sexy to talk about kicking extra points and punt drills and all of that, especially as they de-emphasize the, the kick returns? But those are points, those are starters, and those are crucial plays, and that's how this game is turned. I mean, you think the biggest plays of this game have all been at special teams. The kickoff for a touchdown, the blocked punt earlier on the part of Snohomish's defense, and now another punt that goes wrong on the other side of the ball. And the missed extra point. That's true. That, that put Shorecrest up 7-6. to six. Mm-hmm. There you see it again. It's just too high. No hope, no chance for Cortez. And he tried to corral it and just sit on it at the one because the last thing you want to do is give up a touchdown on that play. And it is an outright jailbreak in that backfield. There were nothing but Shorecrest Scots there, four of them around the end zone. And so that gives Shorecrest much-needed breathing room to where now a field goal can only tie should that unit ever get a shot. Yeah, what what we need here for Snohomish is to get a stop. That's the first thing, is off this free kick, just get a stop, get the ball back, and a touchdown still puts you back in front. Well, what Snohomish needs is not only a stop, but a quick one. That wouldn't you love, if you're Joey Hammer, a three and out? Yeah, that would be massive. But you know what's coming. You and I both know what's coming. That ball is staying on the ground. They're going to take all the air out of it, and they're going to play rugby. And we have our officiating timeout oh, here. They, with... they lined up on the wrong sides of the ball for this free <laughs> kick. The officials caught it, and no one else did. Um, I'm on the opposite side of that guy. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's been a minute for me, but uh, <laughs> it seems like it's been a minute for the officials, too. It's like, wait, something's not right here, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Lining up to kick it away is Ethan Huber. He's got a man deep in the form of Charlie Chin. And now we'll have another whistle as... Are they saying the, the T is not the right size? Are they saying he can't kick it off? I thought you could kick it off a T on a free kick after a safety. I'm going to have to look very deep in that WIAA rule book to see what we can do here. Are we going to just have a, have a drop kick? Well, while they talk it over, while we have a moment to ourselves, STSBN would like to thank our sponsors of high school sports, McDaniel's Do It Center of Snohomish, Home Comfort Alliance of Everett, Adrenaline Fundraising of Washington State, Gene Johnson Plumbing of Muckleteo, Bickford Ford of Snohomish, Monster Energy Drink, U.S. Army, Navy, and Marines, and, of course, Les Schwab of Snohomish County. Casey Bryant alongside Amp Harrell here for SDSPN's presentation of Friday Night Lights. Okay. Pushing them back a bit. As they were trying to determine from what yard line do the Panthers kick off from, and it will, in fact, be the 25-yard line instead of the 35. Yeah, that's the unique thing about a safety. You don't see those very often, but you can either punt it, you can basically drop kick it, or you can do a straight-up kickoff. And it's not like a normal kickoff because, well, you're not going off the typical change of possession. So everybody had to consult their rule books. And we'll try this again again. Well, the extra field position certainly helps the Scots out even more as they are in a dynamite position with 9.19 to go in regulation. As the whistle sounds and Huber gets ready to kick it away. And it will be a squib over the middle. Fielded on a bounce. Running into his own man and nowhere to go. And it's quickly wrapped up from behind is Soren Liris. It's interesting. Lyris almost looked like he wanted to take a knee, and one of his teammates was like, no, run. <laughs> that way. <laughs> well, the he, correct direction. He's ordinarily used as a punter, and so he's getting to field some of the special teams' action of his own. Well, 
I, I love seeing multi-way starters on on offense, defense, special teams. Remember a, a game probably 20 years ago I saw where a guy went to D2 soccer, but he was playing football. He got an interception on defense. Two plays later, as a tight end split in, caught the touchdown, kicked the extra point, and kicked off. Light day's work. Yeah, and sold popcorn on the side. <laughs> probably called the game, too. It is a face off, excuse me, a snap taken by Stevenson who comes up the right side. They're going to drop the gloves every once in a while. <laughs> Listen, hockey season is around the corner. The Silver Tips do start up next weekend. Well, they can saucer that football out in front and just hammer away at it. <laughs> Second down and seven after a gain of three on the direct snap to the quarterback. It was a run all the way. And another run for Stevenson who has been utilized in that option set. All evening long, and why not? It's worked to perfection, picking up those little bits of yards and keeping the clock moving. Keeping the defense guessing, too, because it's not all low. Second and seven for Stevenson. Low snap, picks it up at his shins, glides forward once more, and across midfield, another good play, another good positive yardage for Stevenson. Behind the mash of that uh, Ginchback, Gus Hamilton. He lined up out a little wider to the left, Cut back inside one gap and then slam back from whence he came. And that was the way the straight quarterback run went. Keep that clock moving. Get another chunk of yards. This is a big, big play here for the Panthers. Third and three needing a short yardage stop. Right at midfield. Low snap for Stevenson. Hands it off. Vo bounces off a defender. He's wrapped up. He's not going to get the first. A good stop by Parker Jackson. Parker Jackson, you'll see him late developing on this replay as he comes in. Give credit to the initial guys there on the hit, but Jackson cleans it up. Give a half a tackle to Logan Willis for just grabbing cloth and hanging on, and it's fourth down. And with fourth and three, the punt unit will come back on. Notice Coach Hammer not using the timeout because he does have enough time. And a monumental stop on the part of this Panthers defense as it is Soren Liris back to kick it away. And Jackson is deep to receive. A bobbled snap. He kicks it away on the right side. And once more, you're gritting your teeth with every snap on either side of the ball as this will be touched up by the Scots on the 14-yard line. Good play downfield, Jake Lockwood, to just slide and fall on it. But I was terrified that was going to touch him. And then we have a live football. (laughs) I tell you, the the snaps have been of crucial importance this whole game because that's another one that it's a near miss. Yeah, that was not a pretty punt. No. It was a really effective punt because despite the snap, Despite the rugby-style kick off the side of the leg, he got that one over everybody and, and well, it was a decent kick altogether. And a nice job by the junior, Lyris. High snap for Hammer, and he's going to look deep down the left sideline intended for Jackson as it's tied up and oh. caught oh, at no. the 45. In- no. Incomplete. It bounced away. Excellent defense by Lasconia. He got a paw in there just at the very last second, and it squirts away. Give credit where credit is due. That was a close play, but, uh, yeah, good defense. And yet another, this is the second straight drive now where Hammer has gone deep on one of the first plays from scrimmage. you got to get some yardage. You're you're down now by three. He goes to the air once more. This one's complete at the 20. He finds Mason Surdy, who fights his way forward for an extra five yards with a great second and third effort. Chamberlain able to get there and get the tackle. And first down for the Panthers. Notice the officials were making some grand gestures there as uh, everybody was stacking. I was afraid there was a timeout taken for some reason. Just getting the chains loaded for a new set of downs for the Panthers. As hammer to the air once more to his left. It's Jackson in and out of his hands. And that was a nice job on that flying tackle there to bat that out of his paws. I think they're going to say that was a catch. And he re- Okay, no, they're, they're no. overruling. They initially said catch, and it came out. The official from the far side says no. But, man, this is getting, getting hairy here. 
Great effort there by Ben Chestnut reaching out that left arm and batting the ball free. Yeah, the chain gang was, was moving. That was why I thought initially he caught it, fumbled it, and got back on it. It all happens in a split second. Unless you're out there on the field, then every <laughs> every second takes forever. Time working against Hammer and company as Hammer to his left and a hard hit oh. behind the line of scrimmage, blowing up the play. Gus Hamilton. Gus Hamilton shot out of a cannon. He knew exactly where this ball was going. Watch this. Boom. Complete, and you wish it wasn't. It's a nice Chris Berman impression there. Boom. Boom. Actually, that was less Chris Berman and more uh, more, uh, more John Madden, Madden. probably, yeah. A little tough action connected for that. <laughs> <laughs> Snap taken by Hammer. He'll pump fakes. Looking to his left all the way. He's got an open man down the left sideline, and it's broken up. Two men defending on that one. Chestnut and Hamilton, good receivers of their own right, and they just put their bodies between the, the receiver and the ball. And the direction finder just a hair off for Hammer as he underthrew that one. If he gets enough air behind that, Jackson is gone. Fourth and 11 with 5.33 left. You don't want to say this is the game, but it's certainly what it feels like, partner. Time is ticking away, and with the way that Snohomish has been bleeding time defensively, you have to keep a side eye out for every single time they cough the ball up. Here's Hammer dropping back. Heaves it downfield again. Jackson reaching out, out of his reach once more. And another turnover on downs. And this time it comes with excellent field position for the Shorecrest Scots. Yeah, that's, that's all you can do is throw for the sticks or throw beyond them. And they are going very, very deep to Parker Jackson. One, two, three times on that entire sequence. And Jackson, to his credit, had his defender beat probably three times in a row there. Yeah, he, he had space, he had speed, and if everything is dialed up correctly, the, the third down play was a little tougher because of the, uh, the two linebackers out in space. Uh, but, yeah, either way, he had a step, or maybe three steps. Just got to hook up with him as we hit 9 o'clock here in Pacific time. And now it'll be Daniel Stevenson out there with Kevin Vogt. The two of them have kept the ball on the ground and have kept the clock moving for the majority of this game. A handoff to Vogt, a spinorama move, gaining about two, and keeping the clock going. Tackle made by Jude Lewis on the inside, just kind of shoving that back in. Jensen also went on the stop. And it looks like we're going to have ourselves a timeout taken to stop the clock. Snohomish. Snohomish will take it, and we'll take a timeout of our own. You are listening to Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County, sponsorship of STSPN's coverage. Shorecrest, Snohomish, coming down to the wire. Stay tuned. remaining in the fourth quarter as Shorecrest leads Snohomish by three points. They've got the ball. They're inside enemy territory. A timeout taken by Snohomish, their first of three in the half. Trying to give themselves as much time as possible to work with here after a potential stop. Hard play by Snohomish. Not going to get greedy here if you're the Scots. Hand off to Vo. He bounces to his right, looking to get to the outside. He dives forward, and he brings himself within about three yards of that first-line marker. Oh, has just been money for this for this Scots team. He's got to be in the mix uh, for the uh, Player of the Game award for sure. Almost assuredly, as if you were to look at the statistical breakdown of yards gained, he's got to have, what, 75? percent of it the other 25 to either stevenson or hamilton i would say so uh, everybody wanting to fight for the shirt the adrenaline fundraising <laughs> player of the game it will be stevenson with the ball being snapped 
from the 19-yard line. He fields it, hands it off again. Vo powering forward. Okay. Reaching for the first. Does he have enough? It will come down to the spot. Uh, Charlie Chin is certainly, certainly insistent that he got it. And he needed to get to the 14-yard line. He's starting to be tripped up right around the 15 and a half. And timeout for measurement, I think. As they will bring out the chains, and this is a crucial measurement here. 428 left. It would bring up fourth down if they don't get the conversion here. And now you at least at the very by virtue of having this measurement, you get some extra time being bought for Brandon Christensen to go over the branching decision tree with his quarterback. What do we do in a short yardage situation needing to pick up the first? What do we do with a new set of downs to try to keep Snohomish on their heels? Kind of curious what the officials are doing as they moved it to the far side. But you're, you're absolutely correct. This is a benefit either way because on fourth down, they're going to go for it. I don't, I don't know that there's any reason to try and kick a field goal here. Talking about the decision tree, you've also got the, uh, the fourth down situational chart. You know, what do you do? What do you go for here? And I would say keep it on the ground and you either get the first down or you turn it over on downs deep in the territory. Well, it all depends on how much you need to stack the middle of that line, right? If you're fourth and in inches, you just power your way through. Maybe you do a QB sneak and it looks like they've got a pretty favorable spot. They have breeze past the chains. Yeah, that, that was a first down by the entire length of the football. So... All of that for naught. And at that point, why even need the chains? Yeah. <laughs> well, they had to move it from the hash mark all the way to the sideline opposite the chains. The officials work in mysterious ways. So. And it opens up uh, quite a bit of room here for Shorecrest to work with. 428 remaining. You've still got the two minute warning and two timeouts for Snohomish as the clock once more begins. Stevenson and Vo in the backfield. Snohomish needs a stop. The clock is their enemy more so than Shorecrest right now. At the near hash mark, man in motion. That's Lasconia all the way to the left, but almost assuredly they will keep the ball on the ground. And it is, in fact, a handoff to the left and Vo into the line. Good open field tackle there by Ryan Stepp. And does Coach Hammer call a timeout here? I think he does. And that is the second timeout used by Snohomish to stop the clock with 3.55 remaining. We'll throw it to a commercial break ourselves. You're listening to STSBN's coverage of Shorecrest at Snohomish Friday Night Lights, presented by Les Schwab Tire Centers. remaining in the fourth quarter. Casey Bryant alongside Amp Harrell for the conclusion of Friday Night Lights here by STSPN. And the Shorecrest Scots have been marching, trying to keep the clock moving. They're stopped behind the line. And that sets up a third and long situation. Now this is more strategy on the part of Joey Hammer. Do you use this timeout? And it looks like, yes, indeed, he will use the third and final timeout, 348 remaining. One more commercial break here on STSPN. We're back with the conclusion in just a moment. 
1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. Take part. We're here to take over. I am the beast. 3.48 remaining in the fourth quarter. Shorecrest leading by three. And it comes down to this final play of their offensive drive. They're facing fourth and long. Stevenson remains out on the field. Either way, he has buried Snohomish deep in their own territory. Trying to keep the offensive pressure moving. He hands it off. End around on the left side, diving forward is Hamilton. It will be short of the first by about two yards, perhaps even longer. Gus Hamilton takes the ball around the left side, out of bounds to about the eight-yard line. And a long way for Hamilton to run. As you see, he gets the block there. Searching for a holding call was Jude Lewis as he was coming around that near end. As he saw that hand come out and grasp the chest of his jersey. And that sets up another fourth down play. It is Stevenson with Vo by his side. Two receivers to their left. Crowd begins to buzz as Snohomish. Needing a stop here on their senior night, a timeout will be taken, this time by Brandon Christensen and the Shorecrest Scots. And we'll take another break. When we come back, we'll have more of STSBN's coverage of Friday Night Lights, presented by Les Schwab Tire Centers of Snohomish County. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Uh. Uh. Fourth and four, and the field goal unit is on for short rest. Most important kick of the day for Gus Hamilton. A chance to make it a touchdown necessity for Snohomish. Jake Lockwood on the hold. Snap as good. Kick is through the uprights. An extra point attempt good earlier from Hamilton, and now his field goal attempt has put them up by a touchdown. It's 12-6. Good pressure being applied there. As you saw, Cole Bedard burst right through the offensive line. Yeah, that's a an interesting call there. I didn't expect him to go for the for the extra or not the extra point, go for the field goal there. I thought that they would just run the ball, run more clock, try and get a first down because a field goal ties, a touchdown wins. Now a touchdown ties and the extra point would win. So, I guess playing the numbers, playing the advantage, you got to score a touchdown to force overtime or try and have a chance to win. 
it makes sense. I just didn't expect it here. I tell you, Amp, this applies a lot of pressure now to this Snohomish offense. We've seen really deep targets these last two sequences for Snohomish where they've aired it out. Now you really need one of those to connect. You do, but you also want to manage time, manage your situation on the field uh, because, yeah, you got to have one of those connect. But I'd rather have have a handful of short passes and some first downs rather than three and out, four and out. That's the tough part. Jackson and Step are back to retrieve. And it will be once more Gus Hamilton, who's been in the thick of the action here today, both as a receiver and a kicker. And a squib up the middle. It'll be fielded on a bounce and diving right to the turf at the 25-yard line is number 42, Reeve LaRue. That was basically a shortstop play. Just trying to trap and smother, like jumping on a grenade. Yeah, you'd rather jump on the grenade than let the grenade get you or your buddies. <laughs> and I tell you, it was... Uh, it was, it was Mr. Heisman himself who said, better to die than fumble this football. <laughs> Snap taken by Hammer. High throw over to the right side and complete, but a flag down in the backfield, and this could very well be a roughing the passer penalty. But it looks like, yeah, looking for 30, and it was rushed and over his head, and there's a reason for it. Nolan Powers will be the one that comes up apoplectic at the flag. That usually means they did it. <laughs> can usually tell who's guilty. They're the ones holding up their hands saying, I didn't do anything. And I tell you, that could very well bail out Snohomish should it go their way because that was an errant throw by Hammer well high over the sh shorter target. So some free real estate here with 3.35 to go in regulation down six. And that will move the Panthers all the way to the 40 with a fresh set of downs. Hammer has four receivers out there. Takes the snap, looking to his left, going the short way, and it falls incomplete out of reach of Silas Green. Kind of like the play flowing that way, flowing towards the sideline. You can get out of bounds, but again, just the connections have been off today for the Panthers' offense. Hammer entered the game with a 63% completion rate. He had 519 total yards, and we've seen him bomb it out down the length of the field a couple of times tonight. He has yet to connect on one of those big targets. But wouldn't he love one here? As he looks to his left, and that's an easy interception. No one in the vicinity by the Panthers, and a costly turnover, his fourth pick of the season. Hammer turns it over, and the Scots have 327 to kill. The sidelines confused as well. That's tough. I don't know if that was a miscue by someone on the Snohomish offense, the passer or the intended receiver, or if that was just a heads-up play by the Scots D. But they get the ball back and a chance to salt this one away up by a touchdown. And it's Ben Chestnut with that interception, the junior perhaps sheathing the stake in the hearts of the Panthers. They still have the two-minute warning to help stop the clock. But boy, oh boy, is that a complete miscommunication on the part of Hammer and his receiving core. You saw to his left, Zaya Nelson was calling for the line of scrimmage for his screen. But it was just no man's land thrown in open space. So now Stevenson back to work. He'll hand it off to Vo. Gets around a defender and gets back to the line of scrimmage not much further. I think that was a run dog blitz. Cole Bedard just trying to get in there and get the first lick. But uh, still, they fall forward and the clock continues to run. I'm not sure we have a two-minute warning in high school, though. That you, I believe you're, I don't believe there is. You're right. That three minutes right now, looming large. It's helping the Scots try and salt us away on the road. And we heard it before the game. Got to play their best game of the season. I would say check that box very aggressively for Shorecrest. 
It was a touchdown with an extra point that gave them the lead, a safety that gave them some cushioning, and a field goal that has made this a touchdown possession game as another handoff to Vaux gains another handful of yards, and the clock will continue to tick down. Jude Lewis in there in the backfield trying to drag him backwards. But now we're approaching two minutes to play. And it will be third and seven for the Scots to work with. And, and we have Amp down on the sideline for our post-game festivities and the presentation of STSBN's player of the game and lineman of the game. So we'll have Amp stopping some players on their way off the field. And we have a minute and 50 seconds to determine whether or not those players will be wearing white or wearing red. And it will take quite the comeback for Snohomish to get back in it. They will need a stop here. I think Shorecrest called a timeout late in the in the play clock, and they did. Yes, indeed. They will stop the clock with 1.39 remaining. Shorecrest leading by six, trying to close things out and spoil senior day for Snohomish. We'll be back with the conclusion of it all. You're listening to... STSBN's presentation of Shortcrest at Snohomish Friday Night Lights presented by Les Schwab Tires. One thirty-nine remaining in regulation. Casey Bryant here for STSBN. Amp Harold down on the sidelines waiting for the post-game festivities as Shorecrest is trying to close things out. Yeah, getting some uh, sideline analysis and differing opinions on, you know, do you just run a play there or do you bleed the play clock down? Because either way, it's going to be under a minute by the time that uh, they have to snap it again for Shorecrest. And they have handed it off to Vo most every play here, and this time it'll be a keeper for Stevenson. Who bounces forward for maybe a yard, if that. And this will be a punt situation for the Scots. They'll get it down under a minute, as you mentioned, and now it's crunch time for David Hammer and company. Yeah, one timeout left for the Scots as well. I did like that kind of pure option, and... He made his decision. That's one of the hardest things about running an option offense is getting your quarterback to decide, am I keeping, am I handing, am I pitching, what am I doing? He looked at it half a second, pulled it down, took off, and kept that clock churning as we're at 101 and now under a minute left. And so this is a huge now. We've talked about the special team's importance and the crispness of the basics, the snaps, getting the kicks off. Never has it been more accentuated than this moment right now. You've got to be able to get the fundamentals going here. And there's the timeout. Final timeout will be taken. That means our final TV timeout here on STSBN. We are back with the final 44 seconds presented by Les Schwab Tire Center of Snohomish County. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. 44 ticks of the clock remain in regulation time. It's 12-6, Scots, and it's time for them to punt it away. And with Amp Harrell down on the sidelines waiting for the post-game celebration on either side, it will be one last possession for David Hammer to try to orchestrate a final-minute miraculous drive. High snap taken by Hamilton, and Hamilton boots it away. He gets it inside the 20, a fortuitous bounce to the 10, picked up by Jackson, who cuts to his left, stays on his feet, 
Gets out to the 25, and that is where the Panthers will start with 33 seconds remaining. Outstanding shoestring tackle. With Jackson getting the football, you never know. He scored the only points of the night for the Panthers on the first play of the game, running the kickoff back. If he houses one here, it's a whole different situation. But now Snohomish, they got to do a lot with a little. And I tell you, that's an excellent punt by someone who's considered the backup punter. Soren Lyris is their usual punter. They benched him in favor of Gus Hamilton in that moment, and Hamilton booted it inside the red zone. That's a great job. And so now it will be Hammer with 33 seconds left. Four receivers out, and H back behind him. He has looked deep five times in his last two sequences, and he'll have another short pass coming here. This one connects with Jackson, who cuts around a defender. Flag is down as he picks up a ball. Ball's out. Ball's out. Ball is free. Let's see. And the flag was thrown just about as the catch was made. So either way, this very well could be coming back for a hold. It looks like possession remains with Snohomish. And now we await the flag. That is not what I thought I saw when he went into traffic, and then I saw the beanbag come out. Shorecrest is pointing, but I, I don't think they're arguing. So officials are going to talk this one over. does look like a penalty against the Panthers. But I've never seen a lucky penalty before, but that, that was it. That could very well present disaster. You are exactly right. It will, in fact, be a hold that is going against Snohomish. And so 26 seconds remain, negating a nice drive and a nice gain by Parker Jackson, who has been one of the most electrifying offensive players on the Snohomish team, and they have been parched looking for offense. So with 26 seconds left, clock stops on the, on the penalty, too, with no runoff. That's an unusual situation for the Panthers. 116 remaining, or excuse me, First and 16, as the clock now begins, Hammer takes the snap. A long wait, looking to his left, Pick. picked off. And that will ice it for the Shorecrest Scots. Charlie Chin just knifed in front and said, mine. He's a secondary player, he's a defensive back, but he is also a wide receiver by trade, and he will take away victory here for the Scots. And you see Hammer looking all the way to the left. Oh, an airborne throw. Injury. And we get a stoppage and a correction. It is actually Ben Chestnut with the pick, and that is the second pick of this quarter for Chestnut. Player is down for Snohomish on the far side, and Snohomish immediately got to a knee. As we take another look at the play, it's excellent pressure provided as well there by Michael Murray, who gets around that near edge and is just in Hammer's line of vision enough to hurry the throw and get it up in the air. You see him break around. That was Jason Marshall, the right tackle. And as we... Have a stoppage here for an injury. 16 seconds remains on the clock. No timeouts remaining for Snohomish. And so victory is all but assured for Shorecrest, provided that they can snap it cleanly to the knee position. Injured player is helped to his feet. And that is none other than the starting quarterback of the Snohomish Panthers, in David Hammer. This place got very, very quiet when Hammer got taken to the turf. And he is wincing and clearly in a lot of pain as he works his way back to the sideline. That's more of an injury to insult than the other way around because on the play that seals the loss, your quarterback also gets taken out. That's tough. And that is a devastating way to end this football game for Snohomish. And so with 16 seconds left, all that remains is the ceremony of the final knee from Dave Daniel Stevenson, who did the job for Shorecrest, chewing up clock. He and Kevin Vo in the backfield were working wonders as a dynamic duo. 
Brandon Christensen got the stops he needed, picked apart this Snohomish defense. They did call a penalty for unnecessary roughness on Shorecrest. They're most likely perhaps driving the, the quarterback into the ground. And one more snap. Stevenson directly under center. Nope. He and kicks and nope, we got a nope. whistle. We didn't have enough uh, players were not off the field yet. And now the traveling contingent from Shorecrest comes to life. About 30, 40 students that are huddled around the front row of the stands celebrating their inevitable victory. Snap taken by Stevenson, takes the step back, down onto the knee, and the Shorecrest Scots pick up their first victory of the season. They take down the Snohomish Panthers 12-6. to The Panthers fall to 0-3 on the season. Just a bitter pill to swallow here on senior night at Veterans Memorial Stadium as Snohomish takes the loss. Their quarterback is hurt, and the pride is uh, none too worse for wear either. Well, so now Amp, I understand you'll be tracking down our player of the game. Certainly my vote would be for Kevin Bow, who was a dynamo offensively. Offensively and defensively as he leads the victorious Scots through the handshake line. Uh, the way this uh, works is we've got to let the, let the players, you know, celebrate some sportsmanship here, and then they'll get in their huddle with their coaches and kind of break this thing down before I get to chat with them. So we may want to take a quick time out uh, before we go to our final interviews. And it is a 12-6 to final. And while Amp goes and gets both our player of the game and our lineman of the game, we will be back in just a moment. You are listening to STSBN's coverage of Friday Night Lights, presented by Les Swap Times. Daniels Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniels the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniels and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniels. A minute, and uh, we're going to be looking up there. We're so. here now for so, the yeah, post-game coverage and of Shorecrest at Snow, which presented by STSBN. I've been watching these I understand that Amp Harrell is down on the sideline talking with our player of the game, Kevin Foe, and our lineman of the game, Theo Childs. Amp, down uh, so, to you. So I got, I got to start off with this. Uh, Kevin Voe with us. Uh, what was that you were telling me before uh, before we came on about, uh, about STSBN? Yeah, I've been watching SCSBN for a while, you know. It's a good broadcast. All the commentators are really nice. The interviews you guys do are fantastic for our players. I just, you guys are a good program. Well, I appreciate that. And now you're on one of those interviews. So, uh, Kevin Vo, our player of the game. Uh, and, of course, we've got Theo Childs, our lineman of the game. So you guys are going to get the shirts. Uh, and uh, you're going to get to say some words here. First things first, uh, let's talk to Kevin Vo, our adrenaline fundraising player of the game. Uh, you were a workhorse tonight as the coaches and managers and everybody congratulating you on a huge win. Uh, how did this one come together for you? Yeah, we played a tough team last week in Monroe, but we knew there's there's positives out of that. We came into the homish team, they're 0 2 too, but we knew how tough they were. We practiced, we had our best practice on Tuesday. We carried that throughout the week, and uh, we came in with the chip on our shoulder. You know, we were pissed off. Nobody believed in that. Nobody thought we were gonna win this. And we just played for each other. You know, part of my line. They played fantastic. They knew what it was down the stretch. It was going to be me all day, and, and they couldn't stop it. So, coaching to give me the ball, and yeah, we won that. We, we won that game. 
Now, now talking about the linemen, got our uh, Les Schwab tires lineman of the game, uh, and that would be Theo Childs. Uh, how this how this game come together on the uh, on the offensive line? Because it's always a battle in the trenches, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, it it just started with Monday, and we had to just realize that we had to come out really strong. And we watched so much film, and we just knew that it was going to be a fight. We, we, were, we were coming down from uh, two losses. It was hard, and we just had to knew, know that we had to keep our heads up and just smash them in the mouth, and that was it. Now, now talking about smashing them in the mouth, this is going to go for both of you guys. So it seemed like this was a simplified game plan of just know your responsibility, run to power unless unless the call was different. Uh, how, how did you guys hide the eggs, or, or, or was it just about beat your man? Uh, I mean, it was a lot of just knowing that we had to just run it down their face and, and just knowing that, like, we had to man up, secure our blocks for, for passes, and, and it was just like man up, hit them as hard as you can, and that's all I can really say. Well, talking about one-on-one -on -one and running the ball, you were the one getting the punishing hit at the end of it. Tell, talk to me about how that went. You knew that they knew where the ball was going uh, at your finish. Yeah, for sure. That's my style. I love running through people's face. Co coaches were talking to me at halftime. I got to make a move, you know. It was like, I got to work on that, make a move on the safety, but it was enough to get the win tonight, you know. I'll work on that, but we ran it through their face. We won the game. And 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 defense, by the way, too. I got, I got to give you guys credit on defense, playing both ways. Yeah, we had that kick, kick, the first play, kick return. We didn't lose. We didn't lose no confidence, you know. Came to halftime. We knew we were going to win it. it. It was just a matter of time. We were, we were just keeping our head up. We, we knew that, you know, it was just a fluke, and we had to keep in it, and, and we knew that. And we knew that we had this. We knew that we had it from the beginning, and we knew that we just had to fight play by play by play, and, and we took it. We started off rocky. We started off rocky, but our past teams, we go down, There's we lose hope. This is a different group, and a, I believe in all these guys. Oh, yeah. We start off a little rocky, but we, we're getting a whole lot of dudes back, and – I'm just so happy. <laughs> spring was spring was looking great. We had a rough start to the beginning of the season, but it was a family. It was a family, and, and we know that we can just dog it out, and we and we know everyone got each other's backs. So, well, 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 let's hook you guys up with some shirts. Let's let's get some shirts here. Let's get this on on wax. Get it on the video here. So we have got the player of the game right here. We're gonna need some pictures. Uh, you guys are are not new to this, and so so let's hold these up high and proud, and. Cameras are up there and the photos are right there. Got our adrenaline. Oh, got to flip that around. Adrenaline fundraising player of the game, Kevin Vo, and our Les Schwab Tires lineman of the night. They're working for the shirts. That would be Theo Childs. Victory for Shorecrest tonight, and I'll send it back upstairs to finish it off. That is about as electrifying an interview as I've ever seen out of a player. I mean, those two guys were fired oh. up hey, to be on that. Ordinarily, you've got to be pulling teeth to get an athlete to answer your questions. Those two guys, they were fighting for the mic there. That was awesome. And from credit to, to Kevin Vo and to Theo Childs for putting on an electrifying performance on the field and on the mic. It should be noted that Kevin Vo said that no one believed in them. Looking at the Everett Herald and their predictions for week three of prep football, Snohomish and Shorecrest, five experts and 88% of readers picked Snohomish to win this game. Defying the odds are the Shorecrest Scots, and that is where we will leave you from Veterans Memorial Stadium. A special thanks to my color commentator, partner, and sideline reporter, Amp Harrell, for excellent work. A special thanks to Warren Steckel on main camera, executive producer Todd Elvig, and assistant producer Sarah Elvig. Special thanks as well to the sponsors of high school sports on STSBM, McDaniel's do -It Center of Snohomish, Home Comfort Alliance of Everett, Adrenaline Fundraising of Washington State, Gene Johnson Plumbing of Muckleteo, Bickford Ford of Snohomish, Monster Energy Drink, the U.S. Army, Navy, and Marines, and Les Schwab of Snohomish County. For all of us here at STSPN, I'm Casey Bryant. Have a good night.